Uh, welcome back to uh, WTC 2015 uh, here in Killarney, Ireland. Uh, we are just about ready for uh, the round three uh, pairing process to begin. Uh, our current matchup that we're looking at um, from the team perspective is going to be uh, USA Stripes versus Germany, Dichter and Dinker. Yep. Yep. Um, so we're just going ahead and we're trying to kind of consolidate the lists uh, right now. Uh, and then we'll go to, uh, do we actually, how long until we have the pairing process beginning? Uh, so that's going to be starting soon, any minute now, and uh, as soon as it does, we'll sort of switch over to that. But until then, uh, the scenario that we're looking at this round uh, is two fronts. Um, so that's going to be the scenario with uh, two rectangular zones offset, uh, one uh, closer to uh, the, the left, the zone on the left is going to be, you know, closer to uh, the player one, and then the zone on the right is going to be closer to player two. Each zone has an objective in the middle of it. Um, and then uh, it sounds like they're ready to do the pairing process, so we're going to go ahead and switch over. All right. All right. Uh, All right. So it so looks like the USA won the die roll, and they made Germany go first. And the the German up is Robert Malkish. Uh, uh, his uh, list select his list pair is Morvana two and Bradigus, very standard. Uh, and both of those lists are very 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 standard versions of, uh, of Morvana 2 and Bradigus, so nothing particularly outlandish when I was looking over the list there. Right. Uh, so my guess is USA is going to counter with uh, Jay Larson, who is playing uh, the classic EE runes, mm -hmm. Trolls mm -hmm. combo. Um, and then what do you think? Uh, That's what I'm looking at here. Uh, I, there's not one that immediately jumps out to me as obvious. Um, Perhaps Brian uh, with his Veil 1, Veil 2 combination. Yeah, yeah. Bradigus can throw a wrench into the ve the, the Legion sort of. Legion has uh, you know, always been kind of a conventionally a typical anti-circle anti -circle faction, faction, but Bradigus throws a pretty big wrench into that. I don't know how Veil 2 or Veil 1, uh, maybe Veil 1 has some game? Yeah. Uh, maybe not. Uh, um, it's, it sort of depends on the list makeup. Let me see what the Veil 1 list happens to look like here. Uh, looks like he's got a Typhon, a Scythian, Angelius, Seraph. Two rakes, shredder, some forsaken, a spell martyr, a spawning vessel. Um, so he has he has some tools. Uh, Win that veil one list, perhaps to deal with Bradigus. Um, I'm actually not sure that other than Jay that uh, uh, yeah. that Team Stripes here has a really obvious Bradigus other anti Bradigus solution. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it's something that they thought about. Oh, I have no doubt. So, I have no uh, doubt. My guess is they're going to put up Jay and then. One other, and then uh, whatever other player feels that they can have a strong game against Bradigus, uh, which uh, we're unsure of at this point. Yeah, and I, would, Germany, I would. I guess I'm guessing would try to avoid the troll player. That would be my guess as well. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna guess Brandon is the other one that they put forward. If it's not, if it's not Brian, it, I think it might be Brandon with Fiora too that. and Severius too. Um, Severius too is actually he can be a decent counter, I guess, to Bradigus with awareness. Uh, yeah, sort of allowing right. him to ignore the. The forests, and then I mean, he's not going to have a very good feat, I guess. Not a great feat, but maybe maybe ignoring the forest is enough. Yeah. Um, so. So yeah, uh, we'll have to see. But I I definitely think Jay will be one of the two options. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely agree with yeah. that. Uh, and uh, for those uh, listening at home, Jay is running a combination of Calandra Doom Shaper, the very traditional. Uh, uh, Runes of War and Elemental Evolution. Yep, yep uh, we covered that. Two pack. Yep. yep, yep. So yeah, I, I can see them putting up either Brian or Brandon. So they put up uh, and, and we were dead Brian wrong. and Jeremy Lee. <laughs> dead wrong. So yeah, uh, so uh, Brian uh, again, Veil One, Veil Two, and Jeremy Lee is uh, Asphyxius Three and Denegra Two. I assume Body and Soul is probably that so, Denegra Two. It is Body and Soul. Yep. I'm curious uh, why no troll drop here. It must. They, it must me. Uh, to me, this indicates that they have a very strong like. Uh, that they have that, that they consider themselves quite strong against Radagus, or at least that they have. There are, you know, so there are concern. two separate uh, Signar players and the on the German team. 
and both of them have a Haley Stormwall. Uh, one of them a Haley Two Stormwall, the other one a Haley One Stormwall. Mm -hmm. Maybe something that they're looking to play Runes of War okay. into. Maybe they're just so they may be saving Runes the, of War yeah. for one of those matchups. Yeah, interesting. So uh, of the Brian, uh, of the Brian Marino and Jeremy Lee pair, uh, I'm guessing who do we think that they're going to pick for? Uh, so remember, we've got. Uh, it's not just about Bradigus. He also has Morvana too. So. Um, between those matchups, uh, I'm not sure. I actually don't know who they would rather. You think Bradigus throws a pretty strong wrench into uh, Legion. Uh, they may very well just pick Brian Marino and take their Bradigus into Legion matchup. Yeah, maybe. Um, I think Jeremy Lee is, is Jeremy Re Lee is running body and soul. They're uh, gonna take the Crix player. They are. Yep. So they chose they are Jeremy, taking Lee, Jeremy Lee. Who is playing Asphyxius 3 and Denegra 2. Okay, so then it comes back. Uh, the remain remainder, obviously, was Brian Moreno and Vale 2. And they offered uh, Sasha Massel and uh, Moritz Riegler. Sasha Massel is a uh, Crix player with uh, um, a Epic Lich or uh, uh, Epic, Epic Asphyxius uh, list that's very, uh, very standard Epic Asphyxius list. His secondary list is Gorshade 3, Heavy Cavalry. So okay. both Soul Hunters and, uh, and Bane Knights. Uh, Moritz Riegler uh, is also Crix uh, with uh, Denny 1, the shooting list that we've already seen twice now, mm -hmm. uh, including down to the, the... Very popular list. Yeah, now, yeah. Yep. And then uh, a Scar 1 list. So it's two Crix lists into the Legion matchup. That's very really interesting as well. Yeah, so if you were Brian with Veil 1, Veil 2, which of those Crix matchups do you think you would rather play into? Mm. That is also tough. Uh, let's see. Let me pull up Brian's lists. Um, so Brian's Veil 2 list is a pretty standard Tier 4 Machinations of Shadows. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Four Angelius, two Ravagors. Uh, two Shepherds, Spell Martyr, and Spawning Vessel. And his Veil 1 uh, has Typhon, Scythian, Angel, uh, Seraph, and Double Rakes. Um, so we could potentially uh, see them picking uh, the... Oh, we actually don't even need to. It looks like they just chose uh, Brian versus Sasha. Okay, so that'll be uh, into the Epic Asphyxius uh, Gorshade 3 matchup is, mm -hmm. is what Brian chose. Po possibly just because I think is Vale. She's not immune to cold. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, yeah, I'm wrong about that. Yeah. Vale is immune to cold, isn't uh, she? Is she? I don't think. I, th think, uh, I don't know off I the top know. of my head. Yeah. Uh, 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 Okay, uh, and so now we have Moritz Riegler uh, still on the table, uh, and he has, uh, like we said, uh, Denegra 1, a uh, very popular shooting-based uh, Denegra 1 list, uh, and then uh, Scar 1 list is his opposite pair. And so I believe it's a pretty typical Bane Knight, uh, like Bane Knight spam Scar list. Yeah. Yep, and uh, with, the, with the two... Um, Menoth players left, as well as Jay, uh, then I would assume that they're just going to throw both Menoth players into this Crix player. Yeah, yeah, I would. that would be my guess Protect as well. Protect the troll from the you know, mean, old, mean old Crix. Veils are immune to cold, so that's actually a uh, good counter to, to, to Gorshade 3. It could there. potentially skew him away from picking right. Gorshade 3. into uh, making it a Lich, Lich which, Legion matchup. Which makes the uh, matchup process a little bit easier on that. Uh, on Brian. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So he, because he can, most likely knows what he's going to be playing into, so he can, you know, better pick choose. Veil one or Veil two, depending on which one he feels better yeah. about, as yeah. far as. So yeah, so I, I, do, I do fully expect uh, to see uh, Mike and uh, Brandon both put up against uh, Moritz here. Yeah, I'm guessing that Jay is probably looking at these two, the Denny one and the Scar one list, and just deciding how he, because uh, Elemental Evolution is actually not bad against either of those lists. Right. So right. he might, they might actually choose Jay. To go up there, and then assuming that I mean, I, I would ass I, uh, Moritz would certainly be aware of that. Of right, it. absolutely. So they would probably avoid him in that case, uh, which is super weird. It's kind of counter to the to the 
wisdom of the past, it's which is that you can you always get your cricks into your trolls. Into your you trolls, yeah. But uh, EE might skew it away from that. Uh, so it might skew it away from that slightly, but the fact that you're left with two Signar players on the German team, neither of which I think want to play into Runes of War, most likely, um, I suspect that the Crix player would take Jay if he was offered, hmm. um, just to keep uh, to keep Jay out of sig like out yeah, of the yeah. Signar. That's an up. interesting choice. Uh, I'm so assuming that the I'm assuming that Jay is talking with uh, with uh, Brandon and uh, Mike Breer right now about how they feel about the remaining matchups. Since sure. they are going, since after this is decided, they are going to get to choose right. the remainder of the two. So they're just exactly. basically trying to figure out right now which which of the, yeah the, the rest of this is just going to play out like a yeah yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna have. So basically, they're gonna figure out what which of the three of them does not ab does absolutely not want to play against uh, Denny One Scar One. Right. And then uh, they'll put up the other two, and right. then they'll be able to determine the last two matchups. Yeah. So. Yeah. My guess is that we'll see. Uh, and maybe they maybe they don't care. <laughs> they may, they very well may not. Maybe all three of them want a piece of this uh, Crix player of Moritz. I, if I had to guess, I'm going to guess that the pairing is going to end up being Moritz versus Brandon. That's just my guess, though. That's what my gut yeah, is that's telling your gut, me. That's your gut? Let's, yeah, it'll that's be interesting gut. to find yeah. out. They're, t they're definitely taking a long yeah. time uh, to discuss it, so it makes me think that they they must they, have something. Yeah, I, well, like you said, I think they're talking about all three different pairings and the yeah. best the best way to work those three pairings. This outcomes. is the time. Uh, the 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 second to last uh, matchup is is the, the one that takes the most time yeah. to discuss here. Yeah, it is Moritz versus Brandon. You were it. Okay, so what's left is a Haley 2 Stormwall list with a cane, paired with a Kane 2 list, very traditional Kane 2 list, and then a Haley 3 uh, uh, Storm Nouns plus Trenchers, uh, and a Haley 1 paired with a Haley 1 Storm Stormwall. Those are the two Signar for German Germany, and then for um, America we have uh, Jay's uh, EE and Runes of War, as well as Mike Perrier's Harbinger and Severius 1. Yep. And it's interesting to think, hmm, kind of want to look at uh, Mike's Severius one. Yeah, I'm taking here. a look at that right now as yeah. well. So he's running a Reckoner, uh, Blessing of Vengeance, uh, Choir, of course, Exemplar Errants, Roven and, Roven and Co., and Tristan with Adjudicator, actually. So that's wow. interesting. That's very interesting. Um I can't tell if they've decided here. I assume Mike is going to want to avoid. It's the both of their Signar players, right? Yes. So I assume Mike is going to want to avoid Kane two. It looks like they've made the decision, but I'm it. It was not clear to us which one got paired to which, so we're going to check on that real quick here, uh, so we can figure it out. Yeah. Like I said, I would assume Mike would want to avoid Kane two. Um. At right. least with uh, the severe I would list. agree. I would agree with that. I was going to say I think that it's going to be Mike versus Benjamin and Christian Metz versus uh, Jay, Jay Larson. That would be my assumption because of the existence of Kane too. Right. Yeah. So they're they're actually still deciding okay. the last two. Okay. Um, I mean, this is the kind of time where since you have the the perfect since you have the choice available to you like really take, take your take, time yeah, and, and make sure that really you're decide the right choice, like if yeah. both lists you know if yeah. one player has any lists that could possibly offer you a problem and absolutely figure that out like there's no you know they have they have roughly 15 minutes to decide and okay. after that 15 minutes is up uh they have to call a judge over to the table and the judge finishes the pairings which nobody wants right so. <laughs> right yeah no one uh, but 15 minutes is plenty of time to figure out yeah you know this kind of stuff yeah um and this matchup process, I think, is truly what makes the WTC really fun. Really uh, interesting, yeah. yeah really, yeah. like, every day and every round when we sat down to talk about it, it's just really interesting to think about from our perspective. It's, and it's very difficult to predict uh, the way that people are kind of – because it all comes down to, you know, someone's gut feeling about a matchup. And if they've played a matchup several times and they think that it's good, yeah. uh, then they want it, you know, but sometimes – Sometimes the matchup changes. Yeah. Uh, maybe there's a slight difference in the list. Maybe the player plays the list in a way that you've never seen before. Uh, so, yeah. Can all. All right. Uh, it sounds like they're pretty close to making that final decision here. 
So just another minute or so. <laughs> Jay's ping-ponging back and forth between the table and his teammates. <laughs> Jay is the team captain of, uh, of uh, USA uh, Stripes. Stripes, yeah. So, yeah. He's, the decision falls on him. Although the, the captain is freely able to uh, confer with other teammates as much as possible during this time. Sure, sure. A and the coach, apparently. <laughs> Curious what their uh, what's got their consideration so much? Yeah, I, this is they're pretty deep in the tank right now, uh, and I'm sort of surprised. Uh, I mean, I don't obviously they've played the, their lists a lot more than we have, but it seemed like oh. kind of a gut like yeah, it was definitely you don't want you don't want to put per year against Kane too like. Neither Severius nor Harbinger particularly want to play against Kane, too. I could be wrong here. Uh, I'm, my assumption is that the hang-up is on what Mike is deciding what, what he that wants to do. That could be. I know Mike is very particular yeah. when making, right. making list choices and not yeah. always conventional either. A lot of times uh, in discussions I've been surprised by uh, his evaluation of matchups. Right. So right. That's, that certainly could be the case. Yeah. But I assume that Jay is considered – I mean, and also Jay is extremely well-versed in Signar, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So – all right. Um, so he's going to, you know, obviously have more of more personal more, knowledge yeah. about which of these matchups, you know, he feels would be better for him. I, my assumption is that he's pretty good. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, oh, looks like we have maybe a decision. Yep. It is Christian versus Jay, as we predicted, and Benjamin versus Mike. So it is as we predicted, Mike per year, uh, into uh, with his Severius and Harbinger build into Haley three, Haley one. And Jay with uh, EE -E and Runes of War into Haley 2 Stormwall and Kane 2. Okay. So now that we know these matchups, we can discuss a little bit what we think the uh, actual, um, the specific matchups out of the two list pairs are going to be. Yeah, sure. Um, so we can start uh, Christian Metz, uh, Haley 2 Stormwall, Kane 2 versus Jay Larson with EE uh, uh, -E and of War Runes of War. Yeah. Yep. Uh, my gut is that Jay's going to pick Runes of War for this matchup. Yeah, Runes of War is a pretty standard, uh, n you know, known hard list for Signar to deal with. Uh, you know, the the weak point in that list is probably going to be Doom Shaper, and he's not going to be. He's even like not, you know, terribly easy to kill uh, for the kinds of lists that uh, for you know a Stormwall kind of list right. or a Kane Two kind of list. Uh, and every attempt you make on him is very dangerous with Molg. Right. Um, so the Haley Two seems like the sort of default list for Christian Metz to choose in this situation that I think that most people would agree that Haley 2 Stormwall is going to be uh, unfavored uh, in the matchup against yeah. Runes of War. So does Kane 2 have some sort of kind of play? Is there like a, is there maybe mm -hmm. like a is there maybe like a maverick option here where he could choose Kane 2? Well Kane 2's always got a chip in a chair. Right. You know, as long as right. your caster is killable. Um, so he could just take it and play for the long game and hope that Jay, uh, maybe just makes a mistake uh, with casting too many Animai, uh, yeah. you know, some turn, or uh, spends a little bit too much focus filling the Creel Stone, or, right. you know, uh, and then he might go in for the, the gotcha assassination, but right. uh, I, I have a tough time thinking that Jay would make that mistake. He's very experienced. And very careful. And player. very careful, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, I mean, it's not entirely unlikely, too, for, uh, for Kane to take down... Um, uh, multiple heavies right. uh, over the course of his feet turn, uh, so that that kind of play, and then you know Kane by himself can you know pick off yeah. two or three rune shapers a turn, oh, absolutely. probably absolutely, uh, yeah. you know probably a, yeah two or three rune shapers yeah. a turn I would say, yeah. and then teleport out to safety with gate crasher, uh, so that you know he can provide you know both attrition and uh, or actually both of those facets allow him to make a fairly strong attrition play if he decides to go for that route. It, it just it requires him to get a little lucky on the positioning of the War Beasts to be able to apply, you know, Kane can't do that all on his own. He's got to be able to apply, like, the right debuffs. True. Um, well, know, remember that Harm's got to go in there. Uh, uh, Ragman, uh, probably. Dark Shroud, yeah. You know, yeah. 
and uh, Banishing Ward makes that very difficult. That's very um, true. So I had forgotten about Banishing Ward. That's a good yeah. point. Uh, we do remember we are playing on two fronts. Uh, that will make Runes of War slightly uh, it's slightly harder to play, mm. uh, assuming that the Rune Shapers can be picked off because the Brick obviously wants yeah. to stay together. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, if he goes with the t kind of typical plan of you starting on your uh, kind of deploy near uh, your zone and then you move to the enemy zone through your zone so that you don't really give them much of an opportunity to uh, clear out your zone and you know get the free sort of scenario points uh, yeah. early game. Yeah. And then you kind of just move toward, like I said, you move towards them. So you've built up all of your space, you know, in the back, uh, with your own your models occupying your zone as much as possible. Um, I think that he could probably uh, stall out scenario for long enough to, you know, be able to get there. But um, I don't know, maybe not. Uh, so we we do expect to see Haley Two Stormwall versus Runes of War in that matchup. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, it'll be interesting. It'll I mean, be interesting to see what. I mean, what we've Christian been wrong goes. plenty of times. We have indeed. So. We have indeed. We're making a career out of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> second matchup is Sasha Mazel, uh, and he has uh, Lich Two and uh, Gorshade Three uh, Cavalry list. Uh, he has both Soul Hunters and Bane Knights mm -hmm. or Bane Riders, mm -hmm. um, and he's going up against uh, Brian Marino uh, with his uh, Veil One Veil Two. Uh, who we have discovered are, in fact, immune to cold. So <laughs> now, is that enough to uh, to drive him away from Gorshade Three? Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe potentially. Maybe. A cav are pretty. Cav seem pretty good in general against uh, Legion lists. Mm, I don't know. You don't uh, think they hit hard enough? They're too easy to remove one at a time. That's fair, actually. Uh, from from the you know the long distance that Veil can That's provide. Say we the Veil Two list has four Angelius, two Ravigor. Uh, and then the Veil 1 list has Typhon, Scythian, Angelius, Seraph, and a couple of rakes. Yeah. So uh, the Veil 1 list maybe not quite as shooty, but the Veil 2 list may be what we end up seeing in play yeah. here. Uh, so it's not that like, it's not their hitting potential, rather. It's just that they might, I think, die before they even get... That's fair. That's know. absolutely fair. Uh, um, given that... Uh, now, Gors now, Gorshade also has Occultation. So, Which uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at doesn't all. Doesn't matter, yeah. No. So, <laughs> so good to know. That's good to so, know, you yeah. Know. Uh, yeah, but it is on his spell card. It that is, is correct. It, it is absolutely on his spell, on his card. spell card. Um, um, yeah. Uh, so but Lich 2, though, uh, I mean, the thing about Lich 2, like, I, I just feel like defaulting to Lich 2 is kind of uh, the way to go. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we've seen in earlier rounds as yeah. well. You know, it's kind of when, when someone's unsure, it's like, oh, I've got Lich 2. I mean, he's good against everything, so. I'm trying to think of how Keith has talked about his matchup into Legion with Lich 2, because frequently he does not play Lich 2 in his Legion matchups. Right. Uh, well, he fears the assassination. Right. Um, now, something that Keith does to try and uh, protect himself from the assassination often is providing some. If he can, if he can get some kind of favorable uh, terrain advantage, a uh, hill. like an arc node on a hill that he kills, yeah, uh, yeah. to provide himself with some, you know, some uh, mobile plus, plus you know, six defense, right, basically. right, yeah. yeah, right, where he can where he can place his rec marker wherever he wants. Basically, he he, he sacrifices his four point arc node, kills it himself. So that now he can have his caster very far up the field right. uh, with plus six defense. That right. makes it very hard to, you know, th that makes the Legion beasts very unreliable. I do think we're um, probably going to see, my my gut says power casters here, Lich 2 versus Veil 2. Right. Yeah. So. Um, I think that, that would be an interesting game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because they both have they both have the sort of assassination potential. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So, I, yeah, that's interesting, I guess. Yeah. I, think, I think that you're probably right, though. Okay. Um, I think it's when I think in these situations when it's like default to, or when you when you're presented default with to a, a top when tier, yeah. When you're presented with a situation where the answer is unclear, you default to the powerful to, choice. To the most yeah. the strongest choice you have available. Yeah. All right, so the third matchup is Mortz Regler uh, with uh, Denegro one shooting list and a Scar one list uh, versus Brandon Kading. Uh, Brandon is running Severius two and Fiora two. Yep. Um, Fiora 2 has Adjudicator, Double Reckoner. I don't think we even have to. I think he's going to drop Severius 2. You do? Yeah, it's too, he's too good against uh, against uh, Cricks, Cricks in, in general. general. Yeah. yeah uh, sure. I mean, let's t let's take a look at his list, I guess. If it's full of Colossals, yeah, sure. then... It does have Adjudicator in it. So yeah. he's got Adjudicator, a Reckoner, <laughs> and a Blessing of Vengeance. That's the list that he played at War Machine. Week yeah, it is, uh, this is the Temple Flame Guard, uh, uh, Roven and Co., so he, I mean, he and might not play that list against. He might choose to not play that list against Crix. Just it's not the. It's not like Fiora Two is awful against Crix. I no, mean, she's not. She's I assume that she's very warjack heavy. She is. She has adjudicator and two reckoners. So, 
Uh, it, she does still have Temple Flame Guard, Ayana and Holt, uh, a couple of vassals and mechanics. I think you're right. I think Severius 2 is probably his choice. I don't know. Uh, but it's... I think this could go either way. This, uh, it depends on... Because just dropping a Colossal into Crix is such a such bad yeah, idea. It is, in general, a bad idea. Um, Sevi 2 has a couple of... Like, he can Holy Ward it, um, which present... You know, if you prevent Parasite, uh, that can be a big swing. Uh, that can yeah. prevent the... Colossal from super trivially dying. Uh, and, but, yeah, I don't know. There's just a lot of things to consider on both sides. Uh, Fiora 2 is also not a terrible matchup in a lot of ways against Denegra because uh, you can permanently light her on fire, you know? And yeah. She hates that, so. Apparently, we do have the matchup, so why don't you and I just real quick take our guesses yeah, before sure. they tell us? And All right, so I'm going to guess that we see Scar 1 into Sevi 2. I am going to say Denny 1 into Sevi 2. Okay, so Chad says Denny 1 into <laughs> Sevi 2. All right, uh, Robert Makish uh, versus Jeremy Lee. Uh, it's Morvana 2 and Bradigus, and Jeremy Lee is playing uh, Asphyxius 3 into Negra 2. Um, I'm going to guess Bradigus. Yeah, I'm going to guess Bradigus into Body and Soul. Bradigus into Body and Soul. I like that. And then uh, Benjamin Futsi and uh, Mike Perrier. We're talking Haley 3 with the uh, Stormblades and Trenchers, and Haley 1 with a Stormwall into Mike's um, Sevi 1 and Harbinger. I'm going to guess Sevi 1 for Mike. Hmm. I'm going to guess Harbinger for Mike. You think Harbinger? <laughs> Actually, Harbinger is a strong play into Haley 3. Yeah. Um, not as strong into Haley 1 Stormwall. It's kind of, uh, kind of a toss up. All right, I'm going to go Sevi 1 and Haley 1. I'm going to go Harvey Haley 1. Okay. I don't think we're going to see Haley 3 today. I want I to see it. I want to, too, but I, I don't think we're going to see it. Yeah. So. All right, let's see what we got. All right, let's see what we got. So let's move to the tables now. I think we're going to move to table 1. Yep. Okay. So we're going to go to table 1, uh, which... We, we don't have an order yet. We're, oh. not, we're, not, we're not sure. Fair enough. Yeah, this was just as they were picked. We'll see it as we see it. Okay, so this is the... All right, so Sasha Maisel versus Brian Marino, and the selection was Gorshade 3 versus Vale 2. So he did not default to Lich. How wrong can we be? We can be we real can be wrong. Really, really we at least picked Vale 2. Super <laughs> wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super yeah. wrong. All right, so this is Sasha and Brian with uh, Gorshade and Vale 2. Okay. We are ready to go to table two. Okay, yep. so this is Robert McKish and the Jeremy Lee. The I chat called this one 100% right. They were, we're just donkeys to them. We are us. super donkeys. <laughs> All right, so this is Robert with Bradigus, which we did assume he would play Bradigus. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't do the full math in my brain. Between, yeah. Uh, well, we were going quickly as well here. To And then we have Jeremy Lee. Uh, and he actually picked Asphyxius 3. So that is our Table 2 matchup. You can go to Table 3. When All right, so this is Benjamin Futsi, uh, and he is playing Haley 3. So we are going to get to see Haley 3 today, so that's exciting. Awesome. And it's uh, Mike with uh, Sevi 1. Is that what we... Is that what we uh, – is that correct, Sevi 1? Yeah, okay. So Mike Mike did pick Sevi 1. So I was right on that one. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. uh, if we thought about it a little bit more, I think we would have realized that Sevi 1 is really, really bad versus Haley 3. Actually, or it's really it's bad, bad for, for Haley, Haley 3. 3 yeah. Because his feet stops uh, the shadows from – or stops the echoes from – happening at all oh, does it really well she can't get any focus she can't spend any focus oh my goodness you're including right including upkeeping up the echoes. i hadn't thought so it, that is really bad for so her. that's like a two turn almost time like, walk on time, her yeah. on her yeah or she just has to go the rest of the game without having any echoes in play and that's terrible yeah that's know? that's super rough actually so, yeah although we might see some really aggressive play from her echoes early on because of that fact i mean the other the other problem is every you know every time sevi pops his feet he's in danger that's also very so true. 14, also 14 great. casters. Yeah. 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 Very true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll go to table four now and see what that matchup is. Yeah. 
All right, so this is Christian versus uh, Jay. Uh, Christian brought Kane two, so he did uh, pull out the uh, the old razzle dazzle here <laughs> to to throw us off. Uh, and Jay did bring Runes of War as expected. Yeah, we're better at picking uh, at picking the Americans than weird. the Germans. Yeah, the weird. super weird, super weird. How did that happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so almost how do you like we know five of these people. I know, know, right? The other, I know, know anyway. exactly. Uh, how do we feel about about this for Jay here? Uh, I have to think that unless he can, man like I said, unless he can manufacture the sweet feet turn where you can kill like the Earthborn and Molg or something, you know, I think it's going to be pretty tough for Kane to deal with all of the beef. I'm curious about a scenario play from Kane where Kane and the uh, other shooting elements of his army take care of the rune shapers. Kane bunkers down in his own zone and jams boom howlers into the brick across from him. Like, mm. do, you, do you see that potentially I being a that strong, could, yeah, that strong play for Kane too? Um, so we'll, we'll have to see if Christian ends up playing it that way or if he's looking for an assassination or looking for a very powerful feat turn to remove one to two heavies with uh, Kane himself. Uh, it'll be an interesting game. All right, we'll go to table five. And we do have confirmation, by the way, Jay Larson is wearing a grumpy cat hat. Fantastic. Fantastic confirmation. All right, so five is uh, Moritz Riegler with Scar 1 uh, versus Brandon Caney with Severius 2. We nailed it. Actually, Chad picked Denny 1, but I nailed Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. <laughs> I quit. Uh, yeah. What so am I even here for? I don't know. Well, you're here because you know. About uh, I guess the I, rules. I guess I need to be the bobbling head. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. N we need somebody for the audience yeah. to be like, man, I could do his job better. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So this is Scar One into Severius Two. Uh, that Judicator seems like a huge liability. Like just looking at the table right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Sevi's feet is so good against cricks though it is i mean he can ace uh, all of the like good solos yeah like absolutely true absolutely UAs true. and you know yeah um so uh that's what i'm expecting uh also besides the satixis uh judicator is kind of a double-edged sword i guess against cricks Still an 18 point or a 19 point or whatever it costs, uh, you know, one model that can be killed pretty easily by yeah, by a majority of the Crick's army. Right, particularly but on the other Scar. hand. Well, on the other hand, AOE's the AOE's that it drops are also very good at killing Crick's infantry. That's true. So that's a very true. And they're pretty long ranged. So very it kind of just depends on how the the engagement sort of works out. Uh, if the AOE's kind of happen favorably for Brandon. Uh, it could possibly like swing him towards a, a, a slippery slope sort of scenario victory. Sure. Um, if not, then I see you know pretty much once anything gets to that judicator, it's just gonna it's just gonna blow up. Very so. true. Can oh, I? Oh, like I said though too, Holy War does make a bit of a difference. Does it, it, I, guess, I guess Holy War makes it a little bit harder to kill than normal. Yeah. So he can't parasite it, it and yeah. uh, you know brings it up to a respectable defense. I think ten. Uh, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe even maybe. eleven. Maybe even eleven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Sometimes you sometimes you miss those fours. Hey, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, the big thing is just not being able to parasite it. No, yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. Um, also, Severius's gun, uh, if he has an arc node, which is very he good, does, it uh, he's got blessing of vengeance. Oh, yeah, of blessing of vengeance and arc node. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. yeah, that's the that's his his arc node, right? Abs it's yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I just missed that. Uh, so that is a uh, also pretty decent at clearing out. Uh, that's very things. true. So you know, that's yeah, very he true. He might actually have a list here teched specifically the for four cranks. Yeah. yeah. Um, Despite the unconventional kind of you know, oh, it's a colossal, but you know, can I comment? Turns out colossals can kill things too. I just want to comment. Uh, in this, in this five, the, like these five matchups, we have both Sevi one and Sevi two. Who I feel like we have not really seen outside of Brandon playing him last year at War Machine Weekend at any conventions or tournaments in a long time. Sevi's kind of disappeared. Now we yeah. got both versions right here on these tables. Well, Menoth has kind of disappeared. That's very true. And they have two. Team USA Stripes has two. Two Menoth, Menoth players. players. I know so. that's also un kind of unique. Yeah. So uh, yeah. 
I mean, yeah, the Satixus traders are definitely going to be the big roadblock for him here, uh, just because he has no really easy way of uh, killing them. Uh, he Sevi does does or does not have ashes to ashes. Uh, uh, Sevi one has ashes, to but, ashes not Sevi but not Sevi two. Okay. No. I couldn't remember if he had lost it. Yep. Yeah, I think his only. Uh, I think he's got immolation. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think you're like right. That. Yeah. Like, his gun can ashes to ashes. Okay, that's what I was thinking about. But, but it's like a half ashes to it's ashes. It's like a well, it's a D three, and it's a ranged attack, so it's so it, it's it uh, for affected by the force. Uh, difficult barrier. to hit. Uh, yeah, the Satixus Raiders. But yeah. I mean, if he can run, if he can have something, I, I don't think. Any, I'm not even sure if it bounces off of that. Might be something to check. I, I'm not sure if it yeah. bounces off of friendly models. If it does, he might be able to make some kind of play where he runs uh, one of his own models up there to try and get bounced to the Blood Witch uh, or to the Sea Hag. And once, once the UA is dead, then it's uh, yeah, it's, it's much, di much different game. It's time to go to Pound Town. Time to go to Pound Town. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, also, as the chat points out, TFG have CMA, so they are decent at killing. Uh, yeah, they're, they're only like Mat six, so I think yeah, Mat six. Getting up to Mat eight, eight they could, you know, they need sixes. Yeah, yeah, not terrible. Not terrible. Unfortunately. Uh, Stixus are pretty good at killing uh, TFG mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah. he, like, he didn't even bother to shield wall them because it just makes them slow and it doesn't actually protect them from the, the chain weapons. Yeah. Do you foresee him using uh, Scar's feet here strictly offensively, or is he going to be using to look at use it defensively to reduce damage coming in? I don't mm -hmm. know if there's enough gun gunfire here to warrant a defensive feat. Yeah. Uh, it's like right on the line almost. Uh, it's the plus five really helps against those AOEs, right? Uh, but I don't know. I, I I generally don't think that. In my opinion, I generally don't think that Scar One defensive feats are a great play. Yeah, uh, it's usually when she's trying to run everything into a massive gun line. Um, Moritz is a very like he's you know very a very good. competent yeah. player. Yeah, uh, this entire team is very, very very good. good yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Uh, just to provide a little background, I guess, uh, the USA uh, Stripe, I was on the USA Stripes two years ago, three years ago, three years ago. Three years ago. Two years ago, two years. whatever. It's two only, but yeah, yeah. Uh, there were two previous WTCs, you were yeah. at the first one. Yeah, right? and the the one team that uh, ended up beating us that year was uh, this Germany team. Right. Almo almost, I think, f three of the same players at least i uh, do remember the name of moritz yeah that's the guy that beat uh, me the beat yep, you right yep. with yeah he was playing harbinger at the time yep. let's not talk about that uh let's talk about uh <laughs> didn't he didn't he just like basically let's feed you out of scenario and anything else. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it really <laughs> embarrassing uh i mean so brandon uh is looking very stylish in he his, is uh, he USA is those jerseys are and spot and, on uh, yeah yeah God. <laughs> uh, pirate jokes uh how about, how about those pirate jokes anyway uh yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> to note, to note, just to get a little bit back on track here, uh, that is a lot of bunched up dudes right there. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, Judicator, I feel like, is going to have a heyday. I think the Judicator is going to shoot in that general uh, <laughs> northerly zone there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think Brandon. Uh, Brandon is drilling. I think there was a little drool. Uh, maybe <laughs> that escaped his lip there as he was looking at that northern zone. Uh, I mean, half of those are Satixus Raiders, so not quite as juicy as you Oh, that's fair. That's fair. It's still, that's a lot of, that is just a dense, densely packed. It's so dense. Every frame Every is so frame. dense. <laughs> uh. I keep picking the wrong Sevi when I'm trying to, uh, this is Sevi 2. Yes, yes Sevi 2. Correct. Okay. All right, so... Uh, the, the, the tough thing, though, too, is he's so spread out. Like, he's, he's so he's kind of densely packed, but he's also spread uh, vertically, or I guess horizontally to them. Uh, yeah. To such a degree that, unless the judicator really just picks one side and goes for that side, and it has to actually get pretty good drifts to clear out most of the stuff on that side, anything left over, especially with vengeance moves, is going to be able to get to the judicator. And then with Scar's feet, and, yeah, you know, yeah. actually backlash is even like a, a potential worry. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, may, I mean, maybe Judicator even just backs up here or stays where he is and just kind of hopes that the drifts go where he. Do wants. we feel like uh, the game is about the Judicator? I mean, frequently I Colossal mean, games are, 
uh, do we feel like it's that important in this game? I, I mean, it's 18 points. Yeah. Like, if if the Judicator does 10 points worth of work before it dies, is that enough? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. The tough thing is the vengeance, uh, just not being able to really control it, control yeah. where the, the AOEs yeah. go precisely. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, I've definitely had some experience with that. You always kill exactly one Bay Knight with a Baron Drift. <laughs> always. Yeah, always. <laughs> Now, uh, yeah, I'm also curious whether or not Brandon is going to feat to just maybe, like, shear off the front line. I don't know if that's a great play. I sure. don't think it is. Uh, I think you want to save it for the kind of the juicy solos. Uh, if just, you can as do a, it. just as a reminder to our listeners, uh, the, the Severius feat is D3 plus 3 undead models currently in his control area suffer POW 12 fire damage roll. Yep, and which you he can boost. He, yeah, and you pick which models you. Yep. you it's not just the closest three or. So, like, what I assume he was gonna, he would try and save those for things like necrosurgeons. Although they're probably never going to be close enough that he can get them, without being an extreme danger. Right. Uh, especially if he's putting. Well, he doesn't need to put holy ward on the judicator because Scar doesn't have any. Kind of, uh, offensive debuffs. Right. Uh, well, backlash, I guess. So that'd be a good one to protect against. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it might also be not a bad play to just the Holy Ward, you know, Severius, the turn that he's going to go up and try and scalpel out some models with his feet. Uh, so, yep, uh, you see Moritz has just provided him with just this massive wall of dudes and Bran and is kind of uh, trying to figure out how to best approach it. Sort of that very typical, uh, you can come up and engage a few of my models, kill a few of my models, but you're not going to be able to get to the the whole chunk here and everything's going to be in range to really uh, get deep into the back of both the zones yeah. on the next turn. I forgot how also Sevi has a spell called Fear of God. He does have Fear of God, yeah. Uh, that's going to be really good because uh, yeah. you can basically just put it on a unit and kind of forget about that unit. Right. Um, probably the Bane Knights at the top. That would be, I think, the ideal yeah. unit to put it on. But also potentially the Satixis the the Satix Raiders is where I thought it was probably going to go initially. They just have such a long threat range, right? That, that it, it may not matter yeah. too much because they can still walk and engage. Uh, but yeah, the Bane Knight seems like a good good choice for that. Uh, just preventing them from being able to charge helps a lot, particularly for the survival of the Judicator. Yeah, we're gonna while they're think while Brandon's thinking over his turn, we're gonna take a quick uh, quick bird's eye view of the tables. Just check in on uh, where they're at here. Uh, gonna check in at table one with uh, Sasha g playing Gorshade three and Brian playing Veil vale two. All right, so it looks like uh, Brian is filling up his pot here. Uh, looks like. Uh, Sasha is flanking both sides with his uh, cavalry, uh, running the Kraken up the middle, along with his, uh, is that Mechanothralls there in, yep. in train? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like the Mechanothrall, or the, the, sorry, the Kraken addition to the Gorshade 3 list, just giving him that ranged presence to him being able to freeze your caster and just siphon and then bolt just them to death is not often enough. Yeah, um, sometimes you need that big gun. So, uh, also, um, for Veil, uh, the Kraken could easily walk uh, with Infernal Machine. It has its, it has its four-inch reach. It could maybe throw a model to try and knock her down to kind of get a pseudo, you know. Yeah. You can't make her stationary, but you can knock her down. And the Kraken has a long throw range. Very true. Very so, true. So that's something that we could potentially look out for. I'm going to check in at table two now. This is uh, Robert playing Bradigus against Jeremy Lee playing Asphyxius 3. Uh, appears that uh, quite, a, quite a contrast here. The very, the very clouded Asphyxius 3 army, very spread out, and the very tightly packed <laughs> Bradigus, yeah, yeah. Bradigus list. Yeah. <laughs> See all the tokens necessary to play Bradicus oh Steam Force. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yep. 
So uh, one thing to note about this matchup is Asphyxius 3's feet versus Bradicus is almost guaranteed to get you know upwards of 20. Yeah, because there's just so <laughs> much fury on the table. Yeah, that's absolutely true. It's absolutely. I mean, because they are there. Each each wold is going to have to force, force to, to at least get plus four armor, right? And then yep. you know, if they want to do anything after that, like yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah. So that actually is a uh, something I, I hadn't even considered. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it at all. Um, I don't know what he then does with that extra uh, focus uh, in this matchup. I mean, you're not going to turn away. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Extra focus. The question is just: is does he then have something to do with it? That's particularly relevant in this matchup. Uh, I don't know. Hellfire? Yeah. You could, if Bradicus isn't camping a bunch. Sure. Uh, obviously, with that much focus, you can always go for an assassination. Like, um, Also, I mean, it's pretty decent to just finish off uh, any you know, wounded but not dead bold watchers. So you can't shield guard it. So True. So we're going to bump over to table three real quick to just check in on them and see how they're doing at the beginning of the game. Uh, now that everyone's kind of unpacked a little bit. Mm -hmm. Again, this is uh, Benjamin with Haley 3 versus Mike with uh, Severius 1. Uh, so we can see that storm pack there, the knights and the blades, or lances, rather. Storm blades and storm lances. Mm -hmm. um, Severius 1 have awareness? Nope. Okay. Severius 2 that has awareness. Correct. Okay. So the trencher cloud wall here is relevant. The clouds are going to be effective. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, yep. Uh, ashes to Ashes is not bad in this matchup. It's pretty good, Yeah, I would say. Uh, just due to his ability to maybe like run an errant forward into the clouds uh, and then target it in the back with Ashes to Ashes. Sure. Uh, and then get some POW 13s on... You know. Ashes to Ashes does or does not RFP? It does not. Okay. Okay. So not quite as not quite as awesome as it could be, but No, but I mean it might be a way to uh dig get, deep in. I get mean get if that you kill enough models, she can only revive so many right. of them. Right, very you know. true. And then like we like we said too, the feet turn is gonna be really brutal. Very brutal. Yeah. Uh the big thing is just gonna be whether he can protect Severius following the feet. So it appears he's running his trenchers here. Maybe not. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about that. Well, that guy, he, the first one moved very far. Yeah, he's got to be running them. Well, it's a min unit of trenchers. There's five left, so one of them have died. One of them has died. Oh, it sounds like there was a small gap. Uh, we're getting reports that there was a small gap in the cloud wall last turn uh, where Mike could draw just a sliver of line of sight to launch some AOEs from. And he got, uh, it sounds like a trencher or two. Uh, I know it's a men unit. Looks like there's four left. Okay. Looks like four left. So must have killed two trenchers. Um, Abandoning the cloud wall plan so early seems. Is, it seems. Bold. F foolhardy, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> not to be too, not to be too harsh. I'm not playing the game, but it definitely does seem curious. It seems like a curious decision. There's uh, is that there's the Piper? Or? That's baby Haley. Oh, okay. All right. So, yep, Haley's are activating. Uh, the Haley Echoes are incorporeal, so that's why they can just move through that, yep, all that absolutely. garbage. But, uh, and this looks like a feat turn. Yep, he's counting out six focus for each. So she's probably going to launch some chain blasts. Or yeah, baby Haley's probably going to launch some chain blasts. Mm-hmm. Be interesting to see if he plans on uh, regrowing the two lost trenchers. Oh, 
Oh, so he's casting. Oh, he's gonna. He's trying to kill Severius right now. Actually. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay. He's casting Force Hammer through Thorn onto Gorman. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, he's trying to knock him down. And then uh, that's Severius standing there uh, yep, by the judicator in the, in the water. water. Yep. Yeah, this is very similar to the way Keith killed me the first time that we played, uh, where he knocked me down when I thought I was, you know, behind yep. a cloud and a colossal, uh, but there was a sliver. Now, does, does Haley one ignore? Does Haley? Does baby Haley ignore stealth? Do they all ignore stealth? No, only. Oh uh, no! No, she grants it to the unit. Grandma grants it to the unit. Grants it to the unit. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. And yep, so I think we have confirmation. Severius was in fact knocked down. Gorman okay. got obliterated. It was destroyed by that force. By that, yeah, yeah. Four dice damage, force hammer. Okay. So Severius is knocked down. Knocked uh, down, and then two storm lances got revived. Uh, yeah, I think Severius is just going to get blown I away. Be I believe yep. that this is probably all over by the shouting. The shouting will be from Mike. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, he's looking for bad damage rolls here on the uh, storm lances that are coming in, and I think this maybe maybe some of those storm gunners can even assault in uh, with their long range storm guns. So, yeah, I think this is not looking good. No. It's actually interesting that Sevi is so far forward. I kind of wonder why. Maybe he was positioning for that feat that we were talking about. Just That's like very maybe possible. he got a little bit greedy. Yeah. Trying to yeah. Or he's never played against Haley 3 before, and uh, Mike is not. It appears he dominated his wrecker. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think he just did 12 to <laughs> Sevi. Yep. Sevi just took 12 damage from a dominated wrecker. Wrecker, yeah. So sitting on seven oh, life left. He's, he's, he's toast. He's very dead, yeah. <laughs> Rip, Sevi. <coughs> so uh, that's the that's the as opposed to our previous round. That's the correct way to dominate a jack and hit their caster when they're knocked down. Yes, correct. Yes. Knocked yeah. them down first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, now he's just trying to basically clear out that errant so he can get those uh, storm. Yep. I mean, storm he's not going to be able to clear it out because of self sack, but right. But still, uh, I'm not sure that he needs to. Uh, I don't think so. But you know, you you want to try and make it easier on yourself if you can. Mm -hmm. So. And those models aren't doing anything else. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And Iris failed to shoot, anyway. So. Classic Iris. Uh, just to answer the chat, I believe he did sh chant no shooting uh, on his war jacks. All right, so it looks like he's getting some proxy bases out here to uh, accurately move the uh, storm lances. Yep, and they're assaulting Sevi. Yep. So he's going with his impact attacks. I don't think this. I think the two of them are going to do it. I After think so. He's, he's only got he's seven got like boxes left. Yeah. He's sitting no, on. He's enough. got way less than seven boxes left. Oh, I, I, Mike has seven marked here, so that's why I assumed he had seven left. Oh. I I think maybe the roll was twelve. Maybe it was slightly less. I don't know. Oh, I yeah, don't know. I don't know. Well, we'll see. Yeah. But I think that he's still. I think he's in trouble. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the Storm Lances have a range 10 gun, I believe. Uh, so they even the, even if that self sack uh, from the errants stops that front storm lance from uh, moving further. moving any farther, you know it'll fail its charge, but it still gets to make it still the gets assault, assault shot, shot. Yep. as long as it's within range. Absolutely. So I think he's going to easily get two 
to Stormlance uh, is assaulting uh, yeah. possibly more. Yeah. But at least two, and the POW on it is 12. Is that correct, Stormlance? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think it's POW 12. So it'll be off two on Sevi. Uh, so apparently he may only get one here. Yeah, it looks like one. I don't know why he didn't do this one. Yep. Oh, they're range eight. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. They're range uh, eight. All right, so oh. apparently Mike is on one. Just left down to one. And now he's going to Electro Leap with the remaining onto the Judicator. Yeah. He's, so he's charged the remaining ones onto the Judicator. The Judicator so that he can Electro Leap their yep. bounces into. He does a couple of damage to a uh, Vassal, it looks like. Yeah. So the Vassal actually managed to live long enough to soak up all the Electro Leaves. Yep. I don't know if... Uh, so Vassal ate three Electro Leaves. That's yeah, pretty good. That is really good. I don't know if Benjamin has another... Well, like I said, the Storm Gunners, I think, can get there. Yeah, that's the question. Do so they have Assault? Yep, uh, yep. If they okay. have the UA, which they do, uh, okay. it's range... Or so they... Eight-inch charge, 12-inch uh, Assault on them, okay. I believe. Okay. Uh, feel free to double-check me on that. Yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so he's probably going to get three assaults uh, on those. And all he needs is one hit, and then the rest auto hit. Uh, although, at one hit point. So it looks like he's got two in range. And that's going to be. Should be enough. That's going to be game. Pow 14 at dice dice damage. All right. Yep. So, yep. yep. All right. Well, that's. Uh, he is a victory to Benjamin in Haley 3, and uh, that's one of the first lessons I learned about Haley 3. Uh, if your caster is not completely safe, she can get the angle. She can make it happen. Right, yeah, she's really yeah, really good at that. Yeah. So that was that was Haley 3 and her assassination skills yep. in so action. One point for team One point uh, Germany. to Germany. Uh, D and D. Mm -hmm. so we're going to go move over to table four now. Bounce over to table four, where we have Christian with Kane 2 versus uh, Jay with Runes of War. Looks like Jay is doing his best to kind of straddle uh, the gap between the zones here uh, with his battle group. Yeah. Yeah, and he's done, uh, he's, I'm surprised he has uh, as many rune shapers as he does on the bottom. Right. Uh, of the, I would have assumed he kind of would have skewed them Send a little them bit towards more the top. towards the top. Yeah. Since they're a little bit more mobile, they're a little bit more independent. Yeah. Uh, they can stay, you know, they right. can operate independently of the battle group, rather. But... Maybe just the, the three rune shapers sort of screening for the mauler there are going to be enough. Enough, yeah. Know. It's interesting that he's assigned the mauler to the top. Uh, so yeah. frequently you see this list played, all well, three of them. I don't think you really need the mauler animus I, in this I, match. No, <laughs> absolutely not. I, I think you're exactly right about that. So, uh, and the mauler, and then and the earthborn is, you know, extremely important in this matchup too. So you don't want it to be off on its own. Right, very true. Yeah. Sounds like they're discussing um, yeah, uh, how much fury is, how on, much the fury is on the Krillstone. So I'm curious, though, if Jay is going to be able to move Doomshaper into that zone ever to start like dominating his own for points, or whether he's just going to be too cautious to uh, you know stop that Kane to assassination. From right. In, so. Yeah. And I wouldn't blame him, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a bad play to just avoid it entirely. Right. But yeah, for sure. Even behind a wall, it's still sometimes not you know, good enough with a trencher or with a ranger. Kane needs sixes to hit. Right. Behind the wall. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> you look vaguely disgusted about that. Uh, freaking <laughs> freaking trencher rangers. Yeah. Stupid doom shaper. Yeah. 
He's got Iron Fang Pikeman stats, basically. What, Iron Fang Pikeman can't tran or transfer. Okay, all right. all right. Look, he's one of he's Nigel's. He's Nigel's greatest trophy, as far as caster kill is concerned. <laughs> So it looks like Alexia is activating here. Uh, he's <laughs> sacrificing okay. Arisen for some purpose. Uh, not entirely sure what. Sorry about that brief interruption. We were distracted by an Irishman. That is the uh, drawback of uh, having this tournament in Ireland, is random Irishmen do walk by. <laughs> well, both a drawback and a blessing. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, so I believe you were talking about Nigel's pride and joy of killing Doomshaper. Of Doom killing Doomshaper, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, so. that's one of the hardest casters he's ever had to kill, <laughs> and he wears that as a badge of pride. Well, maybe he can call up... Uh, Maybe he can call up Christian and give him some pointers here. Yeah, yeah, perhaps, perhaps. Get the Nigel phone. Get that Nigel phone, yeah. Uh, so. Even so, uh, it does, it, it looks like he didn't go quite with the plan that you were hoping for at the beginning of the, the right. day with uh, yeah. sending the boom howlers hard into the... Uh, into uh, the far zone. Yeah, but and it, no, it, it's looking like that's not going to matter quite as much right. because Doom Shaper is too sort of timid to come into the zone right. anyway. Yeah, very so. true, very true. So in that case, clouding out is probably best. Yeah. Uh, it looks like he's got Rangers up top. Boomhaller spread across. Uh, Alexia sort of mixed in amongst them. I see Iron and Holt on the hill up there at the top. Um, I'm looking for other debuffers. Uh, he's got to have ra that might be Ragman on the far back. It's hard to tell for sure. Mm. Take another look at his list here real quick. Um. Let's see, he's got Ion and Holt. Ion and Holt is his only armor debuffing in this in this uh, list. That's not great versus Banishing Ward. It's it's not. That's true. I can't tell exactly where Banishing Ward is, but I would assume yeah. it's on Mulg. There appears to be a token uh, near I him. I might put it on the, the Earthborn, actually. On the Earthborn. the Earthborn is probably is more, more important, important to uh, preserve the armor buff. Sure. Sure. Uh, we're going to go get some confirmation on where, uh, where that Banishing Ward is. I still am assuming that he's going to make the play here uh, to clear out the top zone. That's the area of least resistance. Probably try and jam up uh, the Earthborn and Mulg with Boom Howlers. I, I still think that's his, his strongest route here, other than relying on Jay to simply make a mistake and get caught with his pants down by, hmm. by Epic Kane. Does he have good mages in his list? Uh, I believe he does. Uh, he's got, yes, so the whole list is uh, Squire, Hunter, full unit of the gun mages with Officer, Rangers, uh, Junior, Alexia, Boom Howlers, Forge Guard, uh, which I, I didn't see on there, but I guess they're sort of mixed in in the back. Oh, no, they're up with the Boom Howlers. I see them now. Uh, so Forge Guard, Ion and Holt, um, Epic Iris, Reinhold, uh, Piper, and Terran De La Ravisi. Uh, apparently, Banishing Ward has not been put up at the moment. The only thing he's particularly concerned about Banishing Ward-wise is is that harm. Right. So. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, maybe Kane and the rest of his army could make a play for clearing the top zone, and then he could start the domination train uh, a turn earlier than uh, the than Jay. 
Well, that's exactly what I and was then thinking. He's got just as many. He's got he's got much more fodder to throw into the opposite correct. zone. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I, that was I, that's absolutely the the sort of play that I expect to see from the Kane two player here. Maybe uh, to counter that point, Jay mm -hmm. is trying to bait out the feet so that he can start being much more aggressive with his caster. That's possible. Um, so there's layers upon layers here. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> absolutely. Layers layers. Just layers and layers of walls there. <laughs> That's true, too. <laughs> um, so, I'm yeah. All right, that should be the last of the random Irish drive-by for the moment. <laughs> uh, Christian here being very deliberate, taking quite a while, like thinking about what he's doing. Uh, kind of looked like he went back and forth between a few different units here. Uh, actually moving Ayana up to harm uh, Rune Shapers, uh, which she should be fine there, but I always... I always have a strong hesitance to ever use her until I'm like, this is the thing that I need harmed this game, so I'm not using her to harm anything until yeah. I harm that, right? Yeah. Um, Especially with the number of AoEs on that side of the table. Right, like, absolutely. Harm allowing the... Uh, Back, you know, the the back sort of guns, the rangers and uh, the chaff kind of units to clear out those rune shapers a little bit more easily. Though might be able to free up Kane to just kind of uh, boost a couple of damage rolls on the the mauler without having to feed. That's true. That's true. And then, I mean, I'm not. I don't think that's going to kill it, but no, you know, but it can, certainly like I uh, can whittle it to the point yep. where maybe over the course of two turns. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that Kane is going to. You don't think he's going to fall for the trap? Uh, yeah, not. I I don't think so. We'll see. I, I am starting to think it was a trap. Uh, you know, just like oh, don't kill my mauler with your feet over here. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. And then in come Doom Shaper or in come Mulgan. Right. You know, and just like, what are you gonna do about us now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I definitely think that's a trap. I think Jay would love for that to happen. All right, so gun mages are activating. Uh, have a little bit better chance of killing those rune shapers with the harm on, on the one unit at least. Uh, just I want. Oh, go ahead. I wonder if I'll see if we'll see a couple thunderbolts on the mauler here just to push him out of the zone. Um, and in fact, that looks like what's happening right now. Could not quite tell. I thought he might be out, but it looks like he was just in. Yep, well, that's exactly what's happening. He's going to push that Mauler out of the zone, and then I think he's going to work on uh, killing off those Rune Shapers just to get the scoring underway. He's got to work his way through three rune shapers to clear the zone here. Oh, when I asked about the gun mages forever and a day ago, uh, uh, that is why that's I asked why you asked about it. Specifically, it, yeah. why I asked about I it. I, I assumed so. Sorry, I just had a complete like I was daydreaming. <laughs> um, yeah, so if he can just push that mauler out and just kill the rest of those, right. yeah, I think yeah. the harm was actually a fine choice. Uh, like I said, if he if he just saves the feet up, for I mean, as long as he has the feet. Uh, in chamber, yeah, you know, Doom Shaper is basically stuck where he is. Right, absolutely. So, absolutely. And then, it, it also just gives him additional play too if he decides to go hard in with you know, 
two two heavies or something like that. Like it gives him a, it gives him some kind of an out. Right. So we're gonna head over to table five and see what's going on there while uh, while this turn sort of shakes out. Yeah. So this is table five again. Moritz with Scar one and Brandon Kading with Severius uh, one or two. Sorry, Severius two. Uh, I can kind of see uh, the adjudicators made it further up the table than I expected it to. Uh, I thought he was gonna uh, have it linger back. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Be interesting. Uh, I don't know if we can get confirmation. I'm gonna assume that Brandon is already feeded, but uh, Scar apparently has two control points. Mm. Yeah, that top zone is gonna be an issue for Brandon. I think. Yeah. So he dominated the top zone and he killed Brandon's object objective. It looks that, like that does look yeah. like what happened. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm actually looking for Scar right now. I think she might be the model that's in the back of the top zone on the bottom of it, uh, but I'm not quite sure. He is surrounded by dudes. Uh, I don't think Judi I mean, Judicator can do a lot of damage, but I don't think he can. I don't do think he'll do this much. Also, was this a feat turn for Scar? Did we get that confirmation? Uh, I think they're checking on feats right now. Yeah. I see a token up there. Uh, next to the focus stack. Yeah, so it seems likely that Scar. This is Scar's feature. Yeah, that's which is bad news bears for trying to clear this out. Mm. Right. Um, so if this is Scar's feet turn, I don't know. Maybe he can try and set set Scar on fire with Judicator. That's what I was gonna say. Where Scar is, there's like not a. It's not an impossible assassination. Uh, it does look like he's got to clear some models off, and that's gonna be an issue under, under the feet turn. If uh, Sevy's popped his feet, maybe that's what I. That's what I assume. Sevy has already popped his feet, but I don't know. We're sending our. Yeah, we're, we're sending, sending. We're sending poor Clint running for us. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like he's measuring right now, so he might be. He might be coming to the same conclusion that we are. I got to kill that. Yeah, I got to kill that bee. So he's still deciding the allocation phase. Actually, ran it. so I think he's trying to decide whether or not he's going to come up, whether he can come up with a plan, to right, uh, to assassinate. Yeah, yeah. I think that is what he's looking at here. Yeah. I think that's the best option for him. Okay. All right. We were unable to determine if he has popped his feet already. So. Yeah, uh, I'm also curious whether or not, uh, and this is this is not something we need 100% confirmation on, uh, but I, I'm also curious whether or not he. Uh, Healed Scar up with the Necrosurgeons after popping his feet. I, or I can kind of glimpse his card, and it looks like there's not any damage marked on it. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell with the glare. It is a little hard to tell with the glare. Um, but uh, if he has not healed her up, if she's only sitting on 11 damage, then the fire roll, the potential Judicator, you know, maybe boost damage, get Absolutely. three or four damage on Absolutely. her. Then the fire roll happens. Uh, that's going to be a dice minus one. Yeah. And if she's sitting on, you know, six or seven HP, like, that could easily... Absolutely. Yeah, Brandon is really in the tank right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I think he has to be working on an assassination Yeah, right absolutely. Now. I mean, I don't see how you come back from this... Uh, this table space, especially with the army that you have available to you. Yeah, he's. Uh, so it looks like she's taken four damage. Okay. So she either feeded for four, which would be a probably first in the history the of time. The first in the history of time, yeah. Or uh, the Necrosurgeon rolled a one. Rolled a one, yeah. Uh, so uh, that leaves her 12 boxes. She has 16 boxes, I believe. Yep, 12. Yeah, because yep. yeah, yeah, she's 11 when she takes the four. Right, five. okay, yep, yep. yep. So sitting on 12 boxes, I, I so mean, I, I think Brandon has got to unpack uh, assassination here, and he's probably going to take... 12 boxes, looks like she's camping four, which is not... A and then under the feet. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, yeah, I mean, so that's 19, 20, 24. Uh, dice off. Well, the feet's plus four, so it's just plus eight. I, she's no, a base. No, it's plus five. Oh, the feet's off. 
I thought the feat was for whatever she dealt damage to. So. Oh, no, she healed for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Your whole joke earlier completely threw me off. <laughs> My mouth is agape right now. Derp. I can't, you are. Derp. This is amateur hour right it's here. It's totally amateur hour. Okay. <laughs> so she'll be armor 24 if she's camping four with her feet. Yeah. Um, Judicator is pow uh, Four, it's 14, I think, on it, based on its gun. Maybe 12, Let actually. Double check. I think they're POW 14 sprays. Double check that. Uh, this I think this they are POW 14 sprays. I think you're right about that. Like there. <laughs> okay, so the Judicator is... Uh, POW 14 on the rocket pod, POW 12 on the sprays. Yeah, up to 14 with... With choir, with yeah, choir. yeah, yeah. So 14s and 16s with choir. So dice off 10, I mean, if you can... You've got two chances to light her up. Uh, I mean, he's got to have to spike. Yeah. You know, if, he can, if he can light her up, he just probably has to do a few points of damage. Yeah, I mean, that's still going to be, you know, having to roll like a 13 or a 14. Right, there. yeah. Which is pretty tall order. I'm assuming he allocated full to the Judy. It's hard to tell if that's three three stack there behind the Judicator or if that's where that's allocated. He may still be thinking as well. He's still deciding, I believe, about where he wants his allocation to go. Yeah. And whether or not he wants to upkeep Holy Ward. If he's going to go for it, I assume he's just going to go all in. Just go all in, yeah. And with the glory of Death Clock, we have like 40 something minutes to wait for him to for think this about this. Yeah, happen. that's absolutely yeah. true. We might have to. Uh, we might flip off and flip back when. Uh, once the decision Once, been once he's made yeah. a decision. Yeah. I mean, here's a, here's a different question, I guess, to prolong the discussion. Is there any other way to come back in this game? Yeah. Down two control points. I mean, already? he can light a ton of stuff on fire. He can. And apparently, she's only rolled one on her uh, ritual sacrifice next turn. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That was incorrect. Uh, we do not know. She's actually. only going to get one control point next turn. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if he can jam something, just throw away something to the zone. Uh, maybe he has time to... So the scenario clock is like a two-turn clock. Right. Or a three-turn clock. It but is a three-turn clock. It's yeah. a three-turn clock, but I, I think that the game is not going to last that long. No, I don't think so. Especially either. with Bane's around, you know, surrounding yeah, us. Yeah, like absolutely. So I think that the scenario is actually just... Now, I don't know what's been fear of God. I'm going to guess it's the Bane Knights down here at the bottom. It looks like there is a Menoth token besides them, so I'm going to guess that's fear of God. Um, so that that matters. Uh, so he did upkeep yep, fear of God. Yep. So it is fear of God. Yep. 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 So he did upkeep fear of God. And he is not upkeeping holy ward. And then he allocated max to the judicator, uh, so it gets one for its reliquary, and then it, he allocated the additional the, two. The to additional fill two it up. to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he can actually allocate four to it if he's bonded. I don't know if it's bonded. If he, I don't know which jack he's bonded, I mm, guess. Good point. Uh, uh, the list I can double might check. Have, he might have just bonded Blessing. So. Uh, I'll see if I can figure it out from the list. Some of them actually list what's bonded. Some of them don't on here. Um, The Judicator is bonded. The Judicator okay. is bonded. Uh, yeah. Does he have Holy Ward on himself? Is that the... Yeah. Maybe he's not going to go for an assassination. Yeah, that's confusing. Maybe he is going to go for the light everything on fire. Maybe three turns is plenty of time. Maybe he just wants to do some work. Right. 
Appears he's battling now. He may have done the math and just decided the math was badly enough in his favor that he felt like he had an, at least an equal chance, mm. if not better, of, of killing a bunch of infantry. Very here. interesting. Let's yeah. see how it plays out, I guess. Yeah. He's moving Blessing of Vengeance up to just make a couple of attacks on some nearby Bane Knights, uh, getting hits and kills on both of them. Uh, if he's going to continue to play the rest of the turn attrition-wise, I see him probably moving the uh, moving the uh, Temple Flame Guard up and maybe doing a couple of CMAs, maybe killing two more Bane Knights uh, if he gets lucky. Uh, the problem with them is going to be that they're armor 21 this turn. Uh, so it's going to be pretty difficult, but even, you know, making four separate attacks cannot be a bad call because you could set all four of them on fire. Um, and then just hope that they all burn. Uh, this is assuming that they, the, uh, that the Temple Fembro had a UA. And I do believe I spot the UA in the back there, so. So, yeah, he could just, he, he might just want to make as many separate attacks as possible to try and spread the fire out. And then I'm guessing that he's going to want to move the Judicator down. Uh, well, well, he's going to want to move the Judicator... Yeah, I would guess down to spray the Bane Knights that are uh, occupying the lower zone and then try and uh, blast them out, uh, get, get rid of them with his his rockets. Uh, but it's, it's tough because he also wants the Judicator to be in a position where it can get to the other zone. And Judicator's only speed four, so... It's going to be tough. All right, yep, he set a couple of Bane Knights on fire with the TFG, but didn't manage to kill any of them. Okay, I was wrong. Judicator's moving forward, and he's going to move up. He's going to try and spray that big clump of Bane Knights in front of Scar. Uh, he could also, I guess, potentially make melee attacks, although I don't think that that's the correct choice here. Apparently, in the field, uh, we got a report from the field. USA Stars is currently two and two, so the remaining match, match will determine, will determine uh, the uh, winner. Yep, so whether whether or not it's so it, USA well, Stars hope and hopes and dreams rest on the shoulders of Ryan Cherboga. Ryan Cherboga. Yep. All right, so he's triggered vengeance on some Bay Knights there. <laughs> Have you sort of figured out? Do you think you know what his plan is? Is it just? Yeah, I think he's just going for a straight attrition. Just plan. straight attrition plan. It seems. I think not he's great. trying to set as many Bay Knights on fire with the. That makes the sense. TFG as possible, and that then trying to do sense. the same yeah. thing with the the Judicator. Yeah. Okay, so they. Uh, Called over a judge here just to catch and figure out how many how many guys this beautiful spray template catches.
So apparently uh, Cheruboga did pull out his victory, so uh, USA Stars wins. Narrow three win. Narrow win, 3-2. to two. And yes, I think that was what the cheering was. <laughs> I'm not sure everyone else heard the cheering. But. Uh, they did. In chat, they, <laughs> they were mentioning the clapping. And the oh, cheering. yeah. 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 Well, there you go. Yeah. See, I assumed the cheering was for us losing. Yeah, because <laughs> we're surrounded by... That's okay. true. All it right. would have been a deafening roar in that case, yeah. No, I'm sorry, guys. We were, I was kind of missing on uh, what all just got set on fire or not. But uh, He actually ended up killing most of the Banes that he targeted. targeted. Okay. Uh, their armor 21 under the feet, and he's POW 14, so eights. eights. And he boosted at least one of them, so... He's actually doing a little bit more work than I expected him to do here. Uh, yeah. Did some decent damage to that uh, that unit of Banes. Yeah. All right. Um, All right, so since it's not an assassination run here and we're just doing some attrition work, we're going to check in on some of the other tables. Tune back in here in a little bit to see how this is turning out. All right, so we're back to table one. Uh, this is Sasha with Gorshade 3 into Brian with Veil 2. Uh, it looks like Brian has worn his way through quite a few of the Cav. Um, I actually see maybe see three, three Bane, cav, Bane, Bane Cav Riders. And the Soul Hunters may be gone unless there's one hiding behind the It's hard Kraken. to tell whether those are dead models or not. True. Uh, True. There's a Soul Hunter on the very back of the table. There's a Bane Rider on the very back of the table. Right. He might. I mean, it's Gorshade 3. He yeah, those very well may be his beacon. Those his might actually just beacons. be, like, yeah. alive models. That's though, very true. Yeah. That's very true. That he's... Yep. Uh, apparently no control points have been scored on this game. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess that... Uh, that uh, black disc in the center of the bottom zone must just be the objective. Uh, yeah, must yep, have just replaced absolutely. it. Uh, replaced the normal blue one with the, the base. I totally forgot about Mockery of Life. I don't know how because that's like in Core Shade's entire stick. That's his game plan. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. That was a just Look, we've, it's been a long day. <laughs> All right. <laughs> brain's kind of fried. My mouth is a gape. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, Mockery of Life obviously is going to be a big part of his game plan. Uh, and that's, you know, so that would make sense if those models back there are actually a lot of models. His, his, yeah. All right. Oh, we have a development on table four. Okay. Looks like Jay Larson is trying to uh, resolve a thrown boom howler into Kane 2, and it looks like it did impact him, knocking him down. Well, the boom howler made its tough check, so there, That's there you go. That was the important part one. of this, yeah. Now, how much <laughs> damage do we do? I said it should be a pow. Uh, well, it could, it, it's, it, it could either be a dice minus one or a dice plus two or a dice plus three. So it really could be anything is what you're right. saying. If it's Animist with the Stone Strength, then it's going to be a dice plus three onto an empty cane. That's, uh, that's rough. That's rough, cane. And if there is any Rune Shapers that have you have to go, that's psh, uh, that's pretty much game. It's not good. I mean, Doom Shaper could even get, there and get in there and Stranglehold if he hasn't. Uh, doesn't the heightened reflexes uh, prevent you from being knocked down? Correct, if he has cast it on himself. Right, right, right. No, absolutely. I'm just, uh, I so frequently see it on him in yeah. matchups. Nope. He's definitely yeah, he's knocked definitely down. He's definitely knocked down, yep. yeah. yeah. Well, that's bad news bears for Kane here. So USA could potentially tie it up here with one Yeah, one. absolutely. Kane is sitting on four boxes. So that was so definitely a raged stun strength. That was definitely a raged yeah. stun strength throw. Yeah. Good old pass 16.
Sorry, bear with us for a second. Some dinner announcements. Do you see Jay's feet token? I do. Oh, I love it. Such feet, such wow. Oh. Well, that's Grumpy Cat. Oh, is it Grumpy Cat? I yeah. thought it was I thought it was the Doge. No. Yeah, okay. Grumpy Cat's good too. Uh <laughs> <laughs> we do not need confirmation. No, we're pretty sure it's Grumpy Cat. Uh, Thank you. So with yeah. Doomshaper's feet as well, uh, that's going to mean Kane can't really shake his knockdown. Uh, yeah, that's a good so point. So that's he's assuming, pretty he, much that's stuck assuming there. he li lives to that point. That's true. That's no. true. He's not stuck there. He's got Gay Crash. Yeah, which you definitely want to oh, cast yeah. on Doomshaper's feet. Does it check when you, when you it checks so. when you spend, right? Not it, it happens before you spend. Before you spend. Or, well, after you spend, yeah. but before the spell results. So gate crashing out of the zone doesn't prevent him it, from, or out of the... Gate crashing the, out of the, the zone of, almost of the immediately feet. kills him. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. It just sacrifices action. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what you want to do with Kane. That is what you want to do with Kane. <laughs> <laughs> it may be a moot point. We'll have to see here if... Correct, uh, yeah. If old four-box Kane manages to... Yeah, Moog's trying to clear some guys out for some rune shapers, it looks like. Oh, and he gets a crit with Moog's club, so that uh, boom howler, so both of those boom howlers are going to be knocked down, which Indeed. is going to definitely give a lane for that for the rune shaper right there to walk yep, through to there walk and up. maybe yep. nail Kane in the face with a rock hammer. So we, we, we could be looking at, if that rune shaper hasn't gone yet, we could be looking at a uh, rock hammer to the a, face. A USA win here very shortly. I think Kane's going to get hammered. Yow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you proud of yourself? Yeah, I'm so proud of myself. Okay. <laughs> Good. Moving forward, just... just try just and do more attrition work on the get chance that, that... work. Yeah, on the chance yeah. that this uh, assassination fails. Yeah. It looks like the Kane player was attempting to play that plan, like come up, dominate, get ahead, and that's why he's towed into the back of that zone there. Yeah. Which Just is the plan that we... It's the plan I think was the right plan. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think maybe try and focus on pushing that Mahler, Mahler a little, a little further, further away. away. Yeah. 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 Or maybe just going with the feet was the right call. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it could have been. Know. Well, Mulk's got to really kill that Boomhaller now, though, now that he's kind of blocked off the... Uh, like, this is all under the assumption that that, rune, that, that Runeshaper is not fleeing yet. and is... Yeah, uh, yeah. capable you know, of actually been, taking uh, an action yeah. Yeah, this turn. If it's already gone, then it's just then he's just trying to you know kill as much stuff right, as possible. Yeah, so. yeah. Maybe he's just hoping to good Mog up where he can primal shot Kane. Uh, that'd be Doom Shaper two. That and also would be. Uh, Doom, Shaper would be Doom Shaper is already gone. Also Doom Shaper is already yeah. gone. Yeah. So none of those things will work. Yeah. But wouldn't it be great? <laughs> yeah, he could potentially go it up and like slam. That'd be a weird. You'd have to get a very precise angle to uh, slam uh, that risen, I think, into Kane. But trying to decide how full on Fury he wants to go here. So uh, two more tough checks on that uh, Boom Howler. That's knocked down. 
Uh, he spent his last fury to make the final attack, and then his uh, affinity with Doom Shaper allows him to yep. make a free attack. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Boomhaller toughen it out. Um, so, hopefully, that Rune Shaper has already gone. I would assume so at this point. Yeah, absolutely. In that case, if Kane's not going to die this turn, uh, being on 4 HP, I think that does probably significantly impact the way that he plays for the rest of the game. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. Uh, He's going to be very, very cautious of additional you know, throws and, and even like strangleholds you know, from Doom Shaper himself. He absolutely is. Doom Sha it's a D6 for each... Fury spent, is that correct? Focus and Fury spent. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Or yeah. that's what I meant, Focus and Fury, yeah. Um, just trying to figure out a way if Kane can just go for an assassination on Doomy under the... But I don't think so. Oh, not not on his feet, Yeah, Kane. yeah. No, absolutely yeah. not. Like, maybe if Doom Shaper is camping zero, and Kane feats, and then rolls a one on all of the dice... To damage himself for all of the, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, he gets the three shots for free, I guess. That's true. So, But Mull gets the protective fit. Also true. For each of those. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't, I think Doom Shaper is safe mm -hmm. for this turn. Unless, um, unless the gun mages or something can do it, you know. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Doom Shaper may be on the zero camp. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Rune Shaper's just doing a little work, a little attrition work. Mm -hmm. Killing some rangers. So Doom Shaper's positioning is actually interesting since he's already activated. Uh, I'm assuming he's where he is because he wanted to catch Kane in the feet. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's also sacrificing scoring a point. Yeah, I think at this point he's so far ahead in the or he's so he, he, the, the attrition play is so far ahead in his favor. Yeah, yeah, that it doesn't really the scenario points I think are just going to be kind of a, a moot point. Yeah, you're probably very right. Uh, you use the scenario points after the attrition. Like, I mean, he can maybe back K or Doom Shaper up next turn once the scenario or once the attrition is really locked down. Yeah, and then just start scoring the scenario yeah. just to force the hand. The sure, force sure. the issue. Um, Yeah, camping zero is a little. It is a little scary. Yeah. Kane could like maybe do something like back up, uh, and then magic bullet himself three times and shoot uh, outside of the once he's outside of the feet range. Right. Uh, yeah. Magic bullet himself three times and then shoot you know something and bounce. Well, him. he's knocked down, so he. Right. I mean, he'd have to shake, I guess, and go for the fifty-fifty of not or it's a. It's a little bit worse. Than a 50 /50. Well, he's sitting on. Oh, he's sitting on four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'd basically lose the game on a tough check. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he can also cast magic bullet on something else. Very true. He could just back up and cast it on like the Rangers or something like that. Very true. Doomy is. Uh, Arm 18 with the stone? 19. I'm 19. sorry, 17, but 19 if he puts the animus okay. on himself. Uh, so it would be dice minus 5, I guess, if there were no animus. Yeah, not great. Animus. Yeah, it's really not great. Three unboosted dice minus 5. Right. Yeah.
Oh, I stand corrected in the chat. You're, you're correct, yes. Uh, if he has four left, it's exactly 50-50. I was doing it inverse for some reason. Yeah. Uh, but no, yes, he will die on a result of a four, five, or a six. Correct. But he certainly doesn't have to shake if he's casting Magic Bullet on something else, so. Yep. Not quite sure <laughs> what happened there. Oh, it was just another rune shaper. Yeah, just a rock hammer. Yep. On a knockdown model. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Kane to do anything this turn. Um, He might be able to still charge Mulg with two or three dwarves. Dwarves. Yeah, that's what I was looking at, was what he could do about Mulg this turn. Uh, I'm trying. Um, Ayana's still there. Yeah. Uh, so a harm. With and a harm, and then charge him, you know, with some boom howlers, charge him with some dwarves. dwarves uh, like, you could ding him up. Pretty, pretty well. up a little bit, and then, yeah. well, I guess you can't shoot then at that point, but. Uh, I was trying to think what the range on uh, Thunderstrike is. Because there's that's always a possibility. Uh, uh, Kane two does not have Thunderstrike. Oh, that's Kane one. Yeah. All these casters and all their spells. That's what I'm here for, Josh. Thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He just doesn't have anything great for dealing with Maul other than his feet and guns. Yeah, which is not going to fly this turn. No. Unless he goes for the fifty-fifty, and then I don't know. So what is he? Is this the Earthborn that's moving up there by Mog? Yeah, okay. So now it's much harder for the dwarves to get in there with multiple. Yeah. You can go for, we can go for the Earthborn, I suppose. So now is Janissa going to drop a wall to protect them, or is she going to... Uh, drop a wall to protect Doomy? Yeah. Actually, I don't see Janissa anywhere. Yeah, maybe she got scalped out with a magic bullet or something. Yeah. He's doing another two-handed throw on another boom howler. All right. So maybe trying to finish Kane off this way. Nope. He's just gonna throw it at that other boom howler. Okay. Just trying to do more work, I guess. Sure. You know, setting it up for next turn. Yeah. Well, he's pretty fall here. Um, so while we're waiting to, for this to resolve, uh, is can we go ba maybe back and check in on uh, Brandon Kading? Yeah, let's, let's uh, take a look I'm, and see what he's yeah. got going on here. <laughs> he is pinched even harder than before. <laughs> yeah. And Scar is even farther back. Yeah, she is. Uh, I'm going to assume that Scar may be at three control points now. Um, maybe we can get a, a yeah, check on that. We're going to go get an update. So again, this is Moritz uh, with Scar 1 and uh, Brandon Kading with Severius 2.
Brandon is doing quite a good job at actually attritioning out. Yes, he is. For us. I he was he not is. expecting this. The fact that the Judicator is still alive is a testament to uh, the list and Brandon. And okay, so apparently Jay uh, may have just... Oh, my God, the worst. Just one right after we switched over. <laughs> what did we miss? So I'm going to guess that the throw ended up impacting Kane somehow. Um, uh, so there was a line of sh sight oh, and a rune shaper. Yeah, so that rune shaper that we were talking, talking about, about it, did, it had not did, activated. It had not. We just assumed it had. I had well, because I assumed he would have gone with yeah, it way earlier. Way earlier. Okay. Apparently he decided to play the rest of his turn first and just troll <laughs> us all. Oh, my troll God. Troll us Jay. all real good. Yeah, we're going to have to have words about he this grumpy afterwards. He grumpy catted the bejesus Okay. Out of us. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Sorry for that, guys. He just long, he just slow rolled us, he basically. He did. So if <laughs> you, so yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So if you uh, right. if you want to see that rock hammer throw, you know you'll have to go to the <laughs> archives. Uh, Kane got hammered. Covered that earlier. All right. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> so, so this is now, now we did tie it up with uh, one yeah, to one. Yeah. So now it is one to one Germany and uh, and America. Yeah. So we've so got we're three back more. over to Brandon here. All right. What a bad timing that was. Such <laughs> bad timing. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. I thought that that rune shaper had already gone. All right. Yeah. All yeah. right. We're good. We're good. Okay. Um, so, back to Brandon. All uh, right. Did we confirm whether or not it's uh, the control points are three nothing scar or? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So we're still finding out about. Uh, Still, still. Yeah, sorry, guys. Sorry about the stream job. <laughs> you had one job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I assume you go with that guy first. He had line of sight, like, way earlier. I know. Why like, wouldn't he just go and throw the rock yeah, hammer? Right? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, whatever. So, <laughs> so Jay got us real good. He got us real good. Uh, now, we are, now we are back to Brandon and, uh, and Moritz. And again, we're <laughs> we're double checking because when Kane is with points. because when Kane is camping zero, knocked down within range of a POW fourteen at four hit points, you want to make sure you do as much attrition work as possible. <laughs> you absolutely do in the rest of the game. <laughs> you absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Jay. All right. So Scar is still sitting on just two control points. So Brandon apparently successfully contested on the last turn, and. Uh, the Scar player has yet to clear the zone and score another point. <laughs> I can't tell whether this is the Judicator's activation or an ancillary attack, but... Uh oh, Judicator's incredible in some, time, some, in some games, it, it turns out. Yeah. It's done a bucket load of work. It's, I don't know how it's lived. I don't I just, either. I don't. Yeah. But I mean, fear of God has helped a lot. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that spell is very strong. Oh, Brandon is just grinding it down. I'm curious what his clock is actually. That I yeah. He spent a long time in the tank. He did. Uh, that's very true. That's very true. But it appears to have been uh, time well spent. Yeah. And it looks like he's getting that Judicator just into that zone so Scar can't score anymore. Oh, this is exactly what he needs. Yeah. This is, when we looked at this a uh, couple turns ago, we didn't think this, this is what he had to do to play this game, but we didn't think it was possible. Right. So It didn't look possible. It didn't look possible. Um, but, I mean, those, like I said, those models were bunched up enough that, yeah. like, and the Judicator is all, it's nothing but AOE damage. Right. Sprays, you know, AOEs, yeah. bouncing multiple times. Absolutely. And, uh, high like pow just, and it looks like he just unhorsed uh, Dara Wraith, I think. That's good. I mean, that's not the... Uh, I don't think Dara Wraith is the most impactful for this matchup. No, probably but, not. Uh, that's and so, I mean, especially you still, not you at this certainly point, kill him if you can. Yeah. Like. Okay. Yep, and we just want to reiterate to uh, everyone that's watching that uh, all of these games are being recorded separately. Uh, so the stream is going to be uploaded, and you can watch that again if you'd like. And also, if you would like to watch any of these individual games to catch the things that we missed and see them in their entire uncut duration, uh, we're going to be uploading all of the games individually as well. So look forward to that. 
Uh, so now that Judicator is towed in on that zone, and it looks like Scar is, you know, Scar is far enough away to not be a danger to it. Uh, and he's got his Reckoner in his other zone. I don't know if he's activated the Reckoner yet, but if he hasn't, he can certainly go in and clear off some of the additional, you know, uh, Banes down there. We can actually um, un see under Brandon's arm that Judicator grid. It is it's pristine. It's almost untouched. It yeah. almost is untouched, which is going to be it, – it's – it's a monstrous problem for uh, right for right. M for Moritz right now. Yeah, we we I definitely am curious. Can we get a, can we get eyes on on Brandon's clock? Because I think that that's going to be the the deciding factor. I think here. that's going to be the way for Moritz to win now. Uh, I know that he was definitely like you know, yeah he, he, he definitely tanked tank, for a while. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Moritz is <laughs> expressing some frustration at not being able to. All right, so Brandon has 11 minutes left on his clock. Moritz has plenty, about 25 or so. Uh, so the question is whether or not Brandon can finish this game in 11. I think 11 minutes should be plenty for I him. I think that should be enough if he, if he plays quickly. Yes, yes. And I, I, it depends, too, though. I mean, uh, Moritz can take a... Well, it's just Judicator is going to be the problem. Because I said he can take plenty of – he can make Brandon's turns take plenty of time spreading his guys all around, right. you know, in the zone Absolutely. and everything, making him take the maximum amount of time possible to finish off those units and really, like, start, like, the pressure back on. Very true. Uh, and I think that that is the correct play for him. Unfortunately, uh, I hate when the game just goes to playing towards the clock. But I think that's what he's got to do but at this he point. Can't, yeah. yeah, you can't – you can't go up against Adjudicator with just your... I mean, if it was within charge range of Scar right now, she might be able to just go in there and finish it off. Maybe. 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 She, I mean, she, got, she, had 11, she has 11 focus this She turn. does. She hits, and, and she hits relatively hard. Pretty hard. Yeah. So uh, with Life Trader, she can be effectively a weapon master right. on all of her attacks, yeah, or at least true. on the, the Takarix, anyway. Right, yeah. Uh, but uh, with that forest back there, uh, and it towed in on the opposite corner of her, I, don't, I mean, she's not even in range of trying that. That Hail Mary strategy. Yeah. This is where the Crick's, uh, Crick's list's kind of uh, the lack of a Mechanothrall recursion engine uh, kind of sh shows how they uh, slow down, you know, in the late game. Right. Oh, absolutely. Well, this has always been the complaint against Scar, right? Uh, she does one thing and she does it super well, but when that one thing doesn't work, like... She just runs at you and punches. <laughs> yeah, like, right. yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's not like when that's our, her only strategy, it's not like she has a lot of late game strategy to fall back mm -hmm. on when she's, she gets behind. So, yeah, I think we're basically just looking at Brandon needs to play as quickly as possible now and just try and absolutely really finish this out. And we see him doing exactly, you know, he's going to try and run his models. He's going to spread them out. He's going to try and make Brandon take as much time as possible. Absolutely. And then hopefully is also you know kill as many models you know because every right. every additional model that Brandon doesn't have to try and clear out yeah it makes it if he has to try and do the entire game if he has to try and do the entire uh, remainder of this game with just the judicator I think he could if he had infinite time infinite time but, but it's much uh, harder yeah, yeah. it's going to take a longer yeah it's going to take a lot longer so interesting the scar is actually coming out from behind that forest. Well, when you're camping 11, you feel pretty good. That's fair. <laughs> he is doing the math right now, though, of how much he can spend safely. So, uh, Judicator is up to POW 22 with Battle, with battle. and uh, Scar is camping up to 26 right now. Yeah. So, I think he's... So, I think he can't spend any focus. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he if Judicator gets on Scar, he could actually still die. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with camping 11. But, yep. I mean, I think that it at least protects him from the guns. Yes, very yeah. much so. Although she could, that's like she could again be set on fire. She can. I could. I mean, it, especially with ancillary attack, I would uh, definitely just sacrifice one of my sprays just to you know just to try and light her up. Light her up. I guess it depends on how much other things are are uh, pressuring her right now. So sure. Moritz went ahead and shifts the clock back. Uh, Moritz took a very quick turn. Uh, yes, he did. Well, he's, he's down to very few. Uh, so now let's see whether Brandon can keep up the pace. Yeah. I think uh, he's just going to – I think he's just got to keep allocating to Judicator. Keep keep Sevy as safe as you can. Yeah. And then 
just you know just start just start grinding it down. You just have to, this is the point in the game where the decision that you make actually doesn't really matter as much as the fact that you're doing something. Correct. Yeah. So it appears yep. like both jacks are are loaded for bear. Yep. So he puts a uh, three on the adjudicator, giving it four with reliquary, mm -hmm. and then filled up the reckoner with three as well. Yep. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just yeah again. Make the just make the decisions and make them yep. quick. Just go, do some work, kill some things. He's trying to decide whether he wants to sing battle or not. And he goes with shielding, um, which is the uh, no spells, I believe. Hmm. What do you think he's worried about spell-wise here? Uh, I don't know, maybe Hellfire? Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I can't think of... Uh, she's got, she got Blood Rain? Or she's is got that Hellfire, Blood Rain. Yeah. Hmm. Backlash. Backlash, maybe. Backlash. That could be... Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, Backlash. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if he rolls like a five or a six on his set ritual sacrifice, that's could that could be like twelve damage just from backlash. From backlash, I mean, Sevi doesn't yeah. have that much. No, HP. yeah, the no. very true, very true. So, uh, yeah, I think we found it. Yeah, I think we found yeah. it. And I think the Scarlock can cast it too. I think it's a backlash. Yeah, I think so. It's a three, I think so. Three banger. I believe or two it's. Banger. I think it's three or less. Yeah. So there's no way it's a four cost spell. We're going to switch over really quickly because we just had an update in one of our other games. It uh, looks like Vale is about to get charged by a Kraken. This is uh, Sasha uh, with Gorshade 3 uh, versus Brian with Vale 2. Yep. And so that, that, is, is, uh, that, is, that a is a Kraken right in. there. Right get, in Vale's face. Getting all up in ba Vale's face. She's protesting that she's immune to cold, but the Kraken doesn't care. <laughs> I mean, the Kraken <laughs> might care. <laughs> if it misses five attacks. <laughs> she's only like that 15, though. So Fair enough. I'm, All right. I'm guessing she's tenacity so it's going to be. Vale is sitting on two transfers, and it does appear to be tenacity. She does appear to be tenacity. Uh, so apparently Ragman death fielded as well. But I, I got to think that if this actually hits Vale, uh, it looks like he might actually just be going for the War Beasts. Yeah. It, it I mean, what's Vale going to do to a Kraken? Nothing. She's not the butcher. She's going to do literally nothing yeah. to a Kraken. She's going to bang her Oraculus off of it. Yeah, obliterate it a couple <laughs> yeah. times. Just yeah, just, just, just to does. make it easier on him. Just, yeah. <laughs> so with Deathfield and him gaining strength from all of these kills, this yeah. is going to be... It's going to be pretty brutal. I, I mean, it might be it might be all Warbeasts dead. Yeah, which is... Yeah, because yeah, he, he, he can get on all three of them. The one he killed already with that four-inch reach, yeah, he can easily get back limited to that other the It's just limited by the focus he yeah. can spend. yeah. All right, so that's yep, two so that's dead. Another Ravagor. He's up to dice plus six, I think. Yeah. Mm, meat fueled. Oh, well, that's a bad damage roll, bad but damage it's still roll. like nine damage. Yeah. Eight or nine damage. I don't know if it's plus five or plus six. Uh, if it, Yeah, it was, it was full on corpses before, so it's still plus five. So okay. that was an eight damage. Did not quite kill the third, the third beast there. And he didn't take his kill shot. Mistake. Uh huh. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. Quite. Mm. Quite. I'm not sure what he would have done. I mean, I guess he shot the pot. Yeah. Maybe he didn't want to make a stinger or something. Right. I'm trying to find out where Gorshade is. That's what I'm uh, looking for, too. He might He's be behind that house. Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like there's a proxy base behind the house. That's going to be. Probably Gorshade there. Yep, got, with all the focus on it. Yep, yep, yep. That looks pretty. Im that looks pretty impregnable. Pretty, pretty safe. Yeah. Fortress Gorshade. Yeah. Chateau Gorshade. Chateau. <laughs> He's French. All right. So back to table two. This is the Robert with uh, Bradigus and Jeremy Lee with Asphyxius three matchup. And. Uh, uh, there's quite a few less models than there were the last time we checked in here. Um, it does not look like there's probably uh, there's at least one point scored because one of the objectives is gone. Uh, looks like Robert's objective is is no longer on the table. Yeah, I'm just trying to parse what's actually going on with this game. Right, uh, it's kind of difficult. 
Uh, so he's, he's clearly trying to charge something right now with uh, Asphyxius. Uh, and then he popped his feet, so he's going to be... Wow, that's a long time to wait for your feet. Yeah, right. particularly in this matchup, right? But, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, the longer he waits to pop the feet, the less return he's going to get out of it. Uh, no, the I mean, question is, is the feet going to be right? enough to prevent him from dying to the massive synergy chain? Uh, apparently. Because I can still count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Nine battle group models, potentially. Uh, uh, actually, no. I'm sorry. I was counting. Some of those were blood gorgers. Blood gorgers. That's it's hard to separate. So one two. I one see, uh, two. World watcher in the. Yep. I see that world watcher the on the hill. Close zone. Yep. yep. And then the one in the one middle. One in the middle. One in the top zone, and then a world guardian. Yeah, I think I think we're talking four battle group models left. Uh, no, that's not a world guardian. That's Bradigus. Okay, so I think we're talking three battle group models in Bradigus. Wow, Jeremy just ground this one down. This is going to really be a good did. one to watch yeah. if you like uh, if you like really uh, deep attrition matches. Right. Also, I want to apologize. Apparently, uh, this player's name, the German player's name, is Robin, not Robert. Uh, the chat corrected me on that. I uh, recorded the name wrong. My apologies. His name is Robin. I'm kind of curious to see how much uh, fury or how much focus. Uh, he ends up with. Yeah, he ends up with after this turn. Yeah. How many souls he can get. Oh, is that a World Watcher as well on this right side here? Above Dara? I believe it is. Yeah, because yeah, so he four. just pulled from it. So, yeah. so with four, uh, what's Bredegus base POW? 13? Uh, I think they're 13 on I both think it's range 13. Melee. I believe it's 13. Getting up to 17 is probably not going to be enough when every Fury you spend yeah. heals a D3. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be also a POW 17, it would be dice minus 6 out of full camp. Uh, I'm not sure he is out of full camp. Bradigus is base 13, so. It looks like he it might looks be. looks like he's only camping 4. That might be a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he had to use some of the focus to. It, it, the feat is, essentially is a plus 3 armor, though. Or it's a plus D3 armor, I should say. Uh, effectively. Mm-hmm. Can we get, uh, so the chat's asking us, and I'm actually kind of curious too, is there any way we can switch back and get an update on the Kading game, the Brandon game? All right, so we're going to check in on uh, Sevi 2 and Scar 1, Moritz and uh, Brandon. Brandon's still rolling. Uh, all of the models are cleared out from the bottom zone, it looks like. Yep. He's doing um, it. He's doing it. I mean, this is just his his clock is what is what we need. What we, yeah. We're going to get an update on the clock here in just a moment. Just killed the objective. So Brandon has four minutes left. He's cleared the objective, and he is firing rockets into Scar. Did you say four minutes left? Four minutes left. That is not a lot of time. It's not, but he doesn't have a lot to worry about anymore. Yeah. Is this a... I think, is this a protectorate model down here in the bottom left corner of that zone on the bottom? It's hard to tell. I guess it doesn't really matter unless Severius is in the zone. Right, because uh, you can only dominate that zone. Yeah. So Brandon ships the clock over and resolves fire on Scar. And he looks like he rolled pretty good. All Scar right, so takes six from being Scar on takes fire. six. She's very damaged, it looks like. Uh, most of that card appears to be black. Uh, it's a little hard with the glare, but. Yeah, I, I, I mean, this game, this is going to be a lightning fast game at this point. Uh, yeah. At least, I guess, I mean, Moritz actually has, Moritz has plenty of quite time. a bit of time to go yeah, into the tank himself plenty of if time, he wants yeah. to. So. If he wants to try and figure out some Hail Mary play here. Yeah. I think. So Scar has taken nine, which means she's on roughly seven. Exactly. She's seven. a 16. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We established yeah. that earlier. Yep. 
Oh, and that's interesting. I think shielding was actually the right call then. Uh, just not to give any like any like anything. any any outs yeah. of any no kind. outs. Yeah. So I I I think it's just scar and a scarlock left. I believe that that is all he has left. There might be something up. Uh, and she's charging. She's currently charging the judicator. So she's getting in there with her tackerix. She's gotta. She's gotta get uh, it done. She's gotta get. Yeah, gotta get it done. I mean, if he can roll it and still camp a decent amount, if he can somehow blow this out of the water and still camp a decent amount, yeah, then that might be enough. Yeah, uh, I, that's an extremely unlikely. We're talking scenarios where it's, it's just very sixes unlikely. and sixes and sixes for days on dice. And then, uh, ah, I want to see it. I want Sevy to get in there with Creator's Wrath <laughs> and just yes. make it happen. Yes, I want to see be that the as best. Well. That's what I want. I'm sending Psychic Emanation <laughs> Brandon's way. Uh, Creator's Wrath, Creator's Wrath. That's right. Kill Scar and then dominate to win. That's yep. right. Yeah, that's absolutely. the path to victory. Oh, yeah, there's a Scarlock preventing that from happening. Actually. Oh no! Oh. Looks like she's life trading. Yeah, which is actually that fire roll is going to be a big problem for yeah, them because yeah. she doesn't have enough life left right. to boost all of her attacks with Tacker right. or with life yeah, trader. Very true. Very true. And then also Scar on one. Yeah. Like creator's wrath. It's it's happening. Yeah. It's basically super happening. It's super happening. <laughs> Uh, good, I want to just say props to Brandon. And then, uh, yeah, I, I I'm very was, impressed. I was like, this game is done. He was surrounded. I didn't think he had much of a chance. We've got some good games. Yeah, we have. Recorded. We've gotten some great games uh, through the course of the day today. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just goes to show you when you take this, this caliber of player. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. You're going to come up with, uh, I mean, if you take this caliber of player times this many people. Yeah, you know, you're, you're going to get, gonna get just great games. Oh, and, he, and he decided here comes to camp. The Scarlock. He decided to camp with <laughs> with Scar and not yeah. go for the, which yeah. I think is probably the right call. Yeah. Considering he has to go down to one, if he wants to do any amount of damage. Right. Absolutely. Which I think the Judicator just still pummels pumble, her to death here. Uh, most likely, uh, she's camping what appears to be ten. Yep. Uh, so she's at twenty six. Twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. Uh, Judicator hits a pow twenty two. Seems pretty pretty foregone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially she's only got seven. Yeah. So basically, punch her twice. Yeah. Brandon He's got to do it in three minutes, though. Yeah, he does have to do it in three minutes, which means he needs to activate. There he goes. Activate the choir. Get it battled. Uh, this is where that bond is really going to come in handy too, because he can boost, 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 boost. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Four focus. Absolutely. He's going to actually just try and power strike her to knock her down. That's that's, that's the better play. Good call. Oh, he's power striking something uh, in front of Scar, I think. Yep. Yeah, something he ran a model. Uh, yeah. I think he had a choir yeah, walk yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now he should have uh, he can three dice minus threes. Buy, boost, and – oh, yeah, three dice minus threes is better probably. Yep, there and we that, go. That goes it. Like, that takes him down. it for Brandon. That, that was a good game. It was, was a great game. game. So that brings the U.S. to two and uh, Germany still at one. Correct. Correct. Uh, so it so – Okay, so we're back to uh, table one. Uh, Sasha with Gorshade three, Brian with Veil two. Right now, Veil two. So Veil two has three control points. Can we can we verify? So Veil Veil has three control points. If she can clear out the top zone and dominate, she wins. <laughs> so apparently. Uh, Angelius got into that top zone uh, to clear some stu stuff up and ended up getting... Uh, free struck free by uh, Warwitch Siren and, and uh, uh, Shadowbound. Shadow bound. Crit Shadowbound. Well, just Shadowbound. <laughs> well, okay. Oh, yeah, it's not Crit, is yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, Shadowbound, not as good as it used to be, but it still works on still free strikes. Still works on free strikes just, just fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so it looks, so it looks like, like he, did, he failed to clear the failed zone. Failed to clear the zone. Yep. Which this has got to be game. Yeah, this has I got can't to be imagine game for Germany. I can't imagine Vale winning here. Yeah, Vale living. A Kraken, a fully loaded Kraken with corpses and everything, all getting on. Yeah, she's uh, she's camping three. It appears. 
Right. I mean, he might even just kill the... Uh, he might just kill the Ravagor then and just try and... Yeah. Yeah. Although I think that the Ravagor is pretty hurt. I mean, it's the Kraken, and then Gorshay can just come around the backside, right? Like, <laughs> Oh, that's true, too. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's pinched between the two deadliest yeah. parts. He doesn't even have to walk uh, around, around the house. Army. He could just go straight through yeah, it. He's exactly. Oh, yeah, right, right. True that. So All right, like Scarlet cast Infernal, Infernal machine. machine up yep. on the Kraken. Oh, and he's going to throw a uh, Stitch Thrall at... Uh, Veil. Uh, so clearly, uh, yep, Gorshade's definitely coming in. Here comes Gorshade. In. Ghost horse. The veil takes a bunch of damage. Looks like she's only got two left after that throw. Yeah. So this uh, is going to be this is going to be yeah I mean he's going to walk as close as possible and try to melee her otherwise it's going to be siphon bolt right uh, is a uh, is his melee weapon actually a cold based weapon no there's no melee there's no, no there's there no, is no melee there's no uh, typing. Uh, that's, melee right, damage. that's right that's yep. right there is no typed melee damage that's right those freaking stitch thralls doing work even after. Even after their everything is yeah yeah yep. jeez. I do like the uh, power attacking with the colossal though, especially a four inch. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. I like to see. Th I I I I, uh, I like to see that. I, I'm glad we've seen a couple of good games with that, featuring that. So we actually have had. This will be four games and on assassination, in this round. Yeah. All four. Yeah. Yeah. Technically, Brandon probably could have won on the scenario if he had a little bit more time. Uh, maybe even didn't really need more time. Uh, uh, but uh, but effectively, the game's a fun right, on right, assassination, right. yeah. And this is going to tie it up for uh, the series, leaving uh, Germany with two and USA yes, with two. Yes, so uh, it'll, it'll be, be down to uh, Robin and Jeremy <laughs> well, Lee. We're going to have – they're forcing us to watch the Radigus match. Game. No. Oh. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. <laughs> Irish Obama. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the angel. I'm sorry. The angel. We just missed the angel dying, um, but that's uh, gonna limit his transfer targets right. as well. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, he got to reave all the fury off of it, but now he's got half as many transfer targets. All right, so here comes a ghost horse. I mean, yeah, she's super dead. He casts a siphon bolt for free uh, from uh, from uh, his his gets a spell for free. Right, yeah, yeah. Thing that that rule, <laughs> the rule he has. Yeah, the chat corrected us. It's thing so Bovnik. We forgot. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, and that's game. And that's game. So that I think is it's mathematically impossible, impossible for, for, uh, for, for Vale to, to live through. through that, yeah. So that is uh, Sasha, victory to Sasha, and a 2-2 split, Germany and U.S. So back to the last match, table two, Robin with Bradigus and Jeremy Lee with Asphyxius 3. Each player has two control points. Can we get a check on the, on the, total clock, or on the clock time for both? Yeah. I am also curious how many souls he got. <laughs> <laughs> this is very exciting, by the way. Whoever yeah. wins this. Is yeah, like, it's a yeah. big deal. Oh, man. Apparently, there's a very large crowd gathering on the stage for it. Yeah, so you guys may hear, uh, you may hear quite a few cheers in the background. Uh, this is, I think, probably one of the, the final matches of the round mm. going. Okay, Crix has a little more time. Uh, Robin has a little, or I'm sorry, Jeremy Lee has a little more time on his clock, but they're both roughly in the 10 minute range. Yeah, it really looks like Radigus is running out of resources here. It does absolutely look like that. I do wonder how many, 
we will never we'll never know now. I guess how many uh, focus uh, Asphyxia got on this feature. Well, we could always watch these games. <laughs> That's afterwards. true. That's true. I bet it was a bunch. I'm I throw that one out yeah, there. I think it was a lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Oh yeah, I suppose we could just look for the stacks of tokens. That's like how many <laughs> models he's got, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, so I see two World Watchers and Bradigus, Big Bad Brad. Yeah, up in the zone. Uh, I mean, he's the, the thing is like circle. You can always just kind of throw that cannon fighter in with those shifting stones. Like Absolutely, you can get them way back in the behind. Yeah, he looks like he's still got a couple mannequins up there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, he can make it a pain for uh, yeah. Jeremy to keep scoring points. I just think it, 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 from the way that the table looks, if they're both tied, it looks like Jeremy will. Uh, it looks like. Jeremy will run out of models slower. Yeah. I, one possible advantage uh, to Robin here is that uh, Jeremy's objective still exists. Uh, so that is a point. If he can engineer oh, a way yeah, to blow that up, right. that's a point that he can kill and get ahead on the, yep. on the, yep. on the, the scenario play. That, put, that would put him ahead on the, the clock. Right, the, the, clock the scenario the clock. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize how good of a uh, drop uh, Gatsby 3 was into Bradigus. Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah, it surprising. I guess mobility. I mean, it makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mobility, uh, really good feed against that uh, against versus that type, that of, type of list. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, and then just generally, you know. I suppose Ashenvale, not that great. But, no, you know. no, I mean, Ashenvale and uh, Carnage, not that great. But yeah. The rest of what Crix does uh, is, 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 good, right. is naturally good against what Bradigus does if you can, if you can enable them to get in. Just having a caster that can have that much presence. Right. Yeah, particularly against Bradigus, yeah. you have to be concerned about coming to kill you. So. Right. Yeah. See, I'm not. I'm still. I'm not sure how. He's down to like. I mean, he's still got a good amount of models left, because of. You know, you get three units of shifting stones. Right, right. But he does, he's only down to like three models that can actually make a f two models that can actually, yeah, actually make, attacks. make attacks. Yeah, absolutely. That's just uh, that's a, a lot of this order. Is, a lot of this is going to be how much work can Brad do? How much work does Brad do by himself? I mean, a lot. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But like, not probably enough to, and also be safe. Yeah. Right. Right. So. I probably. I mean, where he's sitting right now. Like the question basically is, can Brad continue to clear out his zone, right? And then maybe make a play on the objective at some point. Is that something that he can do? Uh, he could. He's got that rate of fire three gun with beatback on it, so right. he can even come a little out of the zone and beat himself back into the zone to score the like a yeah. final two points oh, on yeah, the last yeah. turn. I think he would have to because its range is short. Yeah, I, I think it's only range eight, if I remember correctly. Oh, I have Bradigus pulled up. It is range eight. Yeah. Did we get? Uh, can we get confirmation too? Did Jeremy go to three uh, CPs when he ended his turn? So it would be three to two right now, I believe. We uh, believe. If that is the case. It's hard to tell for sure whether or not there was, but I don't think that there's there is. A, yeah, it's such a cluster F of models. Yeah. So you see, he shifted two stones down into the uh, oh three stones. Yep. Down into the uh, bottom scenario. Uh, I mean, Gatsby kills stones trivially. With trivially. It's POW 15, yes, POW 16. Yeah. Swizzles them. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, still 2-2 two, two right now. Apparently he failed to clear out the shifting stone last turn. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, Robin may actually be slightly advantaged here on the, on the scenario clock. I can't tell what that model is that uh, is in the top zone that's not a mannequin or a stone or Bradigus. Oh, it's a sentry stone. It is a sentry stone? Yeah. Okay. So Bradigus should have gone to three control points here, correct? Yes. Yep, Asphyxius just himself clears out all of the stones. Yep. 
Now I assume he's going to try and run as many things into that zone. Right. Well, not as many things, I guess, because the because of the way that the stones can spread out and teleport over. Yeah. So uh, Asixius won't be able to, if he teleports them, you know, spreads them out. Like, Asixius won't be able to kill all, all three of them on his own. Right. So he does need some backup. <laughs> Are all the wolds dead? No, there's one left, right? I got to read this comment. Necromerlid. Congrats to Jeremy and Robin for finding a way to make a Bradigus game exciting to watch. <laughs> Fantastic. True story. <laughs> True story. They said it couldn't be done. <laughs> uh, last we checked, Cricks was slightly ahead. Jeremy Lee was slightly ahead on clock, but they're very close. And their turns are going blazing fast at yeah. this point. It is currently 3-2 scenario points in favor of Bradigus. Yeah, I think you're right. We could see Bradigus come forward. Yeah. Try and, and like beat back and rift that objective down, down and, and then, then get back into the zone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll be, and that would, and then that would cause him to win right. in one turn. He's in one turn, yeah. I wonder if Jeremy Lee is thinking about protecting his his objective in any way. I think if I had to guess that he is positioning to seven I minutes for Jeremy Lee, five minutes for Bradigus and Robin Robin with Bradigus. I think that he's positioning to try and limit the number of models that can port into the zone. So that maybe next turn he can just uh if he can clear them all out. Uh, he can just run as many things as possible into the other zone. Is that a living wold there? Uh, oh, that might be a wold watcher, yeah. Yeah, So, which makes it even easier to remove, potentially. It depends on what his damage cred looks like. He may be beat up very badly. Also, they're only about 12. Yep, they are currently 3-3, three, three, and the time has been shipped over back to Robin with uh, a slight what? time advantage to uh, Jeremy. No, Jeremy Lee has seven minutes. Uh, Robin has five. Uh, yes, a slight oh, time a slight advantage time to Jeremy. I understand. Yes. What, okay, yeah. Clearing the zone is going. Clearing the zone and clearing and destroying the objective may be too much for Bradigus to do in a single turn here. Yeah. Yeah, I think he should have maybe gone with the stick mans first. Perhaps seen what he could get as far as the sprays Just are concerned. Maybe try and get lucky with them. Yeah. They also get to boost uh, if they have any fury on the sentry stone. Right, so I'm not sure right. If it doesn't if look was. like there's anything on the sentry stone, but. Yeah. Not a good roll. No. Uh, uh, an even worse roll. The wheels might be falling off here. Yeah. We could be looking at the way that... Uh, so he's trying to kill some Blood Witches right now, it looks yeah. like. Uh, three misses is just painful. Yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, he needs sevens, so... Yeah. You're likely to miss a few, but... But, yeah, three, three out of four is rough. And he just missed it a boosted. That's, that's. Yeah, uh, the wheels definitely have fallen off. Yeah. That's too bad. Oh, Bradicus hasn't used his feet yet. And he's using his feet right now. Wow. Um. This is interesting. So maybe, yeah, I guess that World Watcher is going to have to try and, and solo that objective. That objective. Uh, maybe that's what he's going for, and then pop back into the... Yeah, so, I mean, he did clear... He actually, even though his dice were terrible... Yeah, he still cleared his he zone. He did clear the zone out. He could yeah. actually still do this. He could do this. So, yeah, it's going to come down to... And I don't know if he had synergy up. Uh, it looks like he does. It looks like he had a... Yeah, I think, he, I think, his, I think his, that, that die there. is marking Synergy 1. So we don't know what that grid looks like on that World Watcher at all, but if it's got anything out, it's going to be tough for that. It's going to be a tall order for that thing to yeah. kill. It's really surprising that he held that feat that long. Right, it is. Yeah. 
I mean, maybe he just didn't need to. Yeah, no, I mean. Well, that's a box cars. Yeah. Yeah, so it's. Oh, and his body is out. He's boosting these. Wow. Well, I think he did that's it. That's it. I think that's game. Okay, so the, the World Watcher's body was out, and he had to boost both of those. Yeah. And he rolled 12 and then 11. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, and now he's going to pop back into the zone when his feet and win the at the game. end of his at the and end of his game. Yeah. yeah, wow, amazing. Actually. I can't tell. I don't think there's any more Crix models in the zone, right? Zone appears to be cleared. Did he just block himself off from getting into the? No, oh, no, no. There is one. There's one in that that corner. Yeah, I think there's a. Okay, that's yeah, it. He yep. killed it. That's it. That's it. Uh, scenario victory to Robin and a three to two victory for Germany over Team USA Stripes. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, are are we wrong about this? Oh, uh, maybe we're wrong. We may be wrong. Can we get confirmation on that? <laughs> okay, so he's got... There is a Crix model there. Uh, but he still, oh, ha but sorry, he still has the... Uh, I believe a World Watcher is attacking a Crix model that is barely towed into the zone. Right, and then so he blocked off uh, Bradigus from getting back into the zone with a, a Stickman. Yeah. And he turned the Stickman into a forest to allow Bradigus to get back in. Back but in. You, but you half your movement going back in. Right. So now they're going to measure to see whether Bradigus is within two and a half inches of getting back into the zone. Okay. Going okay. through the rough terrain. Okay. I believe this is what's happening. I, I think so as well. It's a little difficult to tell on the stream here. Yep. Oh, I think that I think Robin figured out a way to do it. Yeah, that's game. I believe that's game. Game to Robin. Wow, incredible game. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Did that did did that go out on the stream? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, it appears uh, uh, like we said, uh, just use the feet to uh, uh, move that uh, move that wool watcher into the uh, objective. Uh, was able to score two points uh, thanks to the objective still being alive. Mm -hmm. uh, that helped him get ahead there at the end uh, to uh, win the match and. Yeah. And bring down the match, the overall match for the Germans, three to two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that was an incredible game to watch. Uh, I want to do the. Do we do, do we do the math on the the World Watcher? The World Watcher. The so the World Watcher is power thirteen with synergy. Yeah, is that correct? Dice minus five. So dice minus five. Uh, and he had to boost. His body was out. Is that right. what we said? Right. Um, uh, we might. Are we I don't think that's right because he rolled three dice uh, both times. So I don't think his body was was out. Oh, oh, apparently he was rolling three dice both yeah, times. Yeah, it, it appeared he was rolling three dice. So at three dice, dice off five, we're talking, on average, he should do 11 points of damage to the objective, With two which is not enough. Right. Yeah, so, so he definitely, he the dice were in his favor in the situation. He did about four points over average to destroy it. Um, so, uh, but... You know? Which, I mean, that balances out it his uh, really bad rolls. really bad rolls uh, uh, clearing the zone with the Bradigus. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Because yep. absolutely. otherwise, Bradigus, if, if, uh, there wouldn't have been quite as much drama if Bradigus had just gone through and cleared all the cleared zone. Cleared all out the zone, yeah. By yeah. himself. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, just a reminder that we are going to uh, rebroadcast this whole entire day uh, right now. Is that right? Right after this? In, in about, about an hour. In about an hour, we're going to be doing a rebroadcast of the stream. Just so that uh, people, because, you know, all the different time zones internationally, uh, everyone around the world can go back and watch this over again. Uh, you know, or if, if you want to watch the earlier rounds for, that you may have perhaps missed, uh, you can watch yeah. that again. So in about an hour, we're going to go ahead and rebroadcast this whole thing. Uh, just to cap it up, uh, that was round three of uh, 
the last, WTC. Last round of the day today. Yep, yep. 2015, yep. last yep. round of today. Uh, we're going to start again tomorrow uh, with rounds four, five, and six. Yep. Uh, that was uh, USA Team Stripes versus Germany, uh, Dietrich and Denker. And uh, we just saw a nail biter finish uh, absolutely for Germany with uh, three points or three three victories, German to two uh, American. Yeah, yeah. so uh, incredible game, great uh, day, lots of games, lots of great games, and yeah. incredible final match here. Yeah, I have had a ton of fun casting with you. Too, I have though, too. So I have I too. To it's been that. it's uh, been good. This has been a fun. This has been a, a really fun stream. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So thanks to everyone for tuning in and yeah. watching uh, and talking in the chat. It's just been a blast to watch it and then interact with everybody. Uh, so. Absolutely. Ton, tons and tons of thanks to that. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, you can follow us all on, uh, you know, Muse on Minis on Twitter, uh, Muse on Minis Facebook page, uh, ETC, and Enter the Crucible on Facebook, ETC Vidcast on Twitter. Um, and then if you are looking for updates today and tomorrow uh, on, the, on more WTC occurrences, uh, WMH-WTC.com uh, is going to be where you can go for uh, live updates all day long. Uh, of, of the event. Yeah. You know, so. And I want to say a big thanks to our, our support guys, the guys that do all the actual work Absolutely. for this stream. Uh, Clinton, Matthew, uh, basically all stars. So yeah, uh, they're you, literally you, running the show. Yeah. So, so you guys have them to, to thank for this, the stream. Hopefully, hopefully you're enjoying it. Uh, uh, they're the ones to thank for it. So absolutely. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, make sure you try and catch the rebroadcast if you haven't seen the whole day. Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much it for us. So yeah, we'll see I you think. tomorrow. Yep. Absolutely. Hopefully another three great matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah.